Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this live operative webcast, the USI ISU initiative. This is the first of the series of the webcast for this year under the leadership of Dr. Sabdis. This is about advanced laparoscopic procedures, which will be beamed live from the Asian Institute of Nephrology and Urology at Hyderabad with Dr. Mallikarjun as the lead faculty. And we are fortunate to have Dr. Mahendra Bandari physically present there to oversee how Mallikarjun operates. And it's fortunate for us that he would be there interacting with us today in this live operative webcast. With this introductory remarks, I would now invite Dr. Sabnis to give his opening remarks. Over to you, Dr. Sabnis. Thank you, Keshav. I'm very, very happy to join this uh, live operative workshop. Well, we started this uh, last year of uh, doing multiple live uh, surgery uh, transmissions on Sunday morning. And the feedback has been uh, excellent. It is it started actually in the COVID where it was difficult to for people to travel and uh, uh, difficult to organize live operative workshops at uh, places which we used to organize in the past. Substitute to that, we started this venture and actually it has become quite successful. So this probably is one of the blessing in disguise that uh, we started this uh, webcast and although now the COVID thing is over, still we are continuing with this. This actually is the brainchild of uh, Kesha Murthy who started last year Multiple uh, programs were uh, very well organized, different, different hospitals, different transmissions, different topics, different sessions, different surgeons. And at one go, everybody, all the members could see various techniques on various sessions and they could, they could be benefited. So today, for the first time of this year, we have the live operative webcast uh, straight from Hyderabad with uh, Dr. Mallikarjun. And the uh, topic for today is the advanced laparoscopy. He organized last year also on the laparoscopy, but today is the advanced laparoscopy. The complex cases will be shown. And as usual, I'm, I have no doubt that this is going to be a very informative, very educative, a very successful webcast. Mallikarjun's technique, we are all aware of. We will be learning a lot from him. And the icing on the cake is, we can see Dr. Mahendra Vandai sir uh, being present there. It was a pleasure and surprise uh, to all of us. Mahendra Bandari has taught almost uh, everybody who are the senior members and now who have become teachers. So he is a teacher of all those teachers and who are now commenting and who are on the various uh, positions. We always love his critical analysis. Right, right. We always love his remarks. And we always have learned a lot from him. Last Today it is an opportunity not only for us, but even our students, it's a great opportunity to listen to him and uh, listen to his remarks. I must also thank uh, respected uh, Dr. Venugopal sir. I can see him joining well in advance, well in time. He's always there. You know That is the thing which we have to learn from all these people that uh, such an enthusiasm and such a eagerness to see a uh, thing comment on everything what we have been doing and we always take all those comments very seriously and improve upon ourselves. So thank you sir for joining and now I request um, uh, over to you Dr. Malikarjun and AI, uh, AINU for further uh, comments and starting the, uh, Dr. Arun Chawla will give okay, us we, 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 Dr. Arun Chawla. Hand over to Dr. Chawla. It's a um, uh, USA ISU program. Mm -hmm. And I also thank uh, Dr. Lakshman Prabhu, who is the secretary-elect, for joining us uh, for this uh, webcast. He is the one who is going to take the, take the whole uh, responsibility from uh, next year. So he is gearing up for that. So over to you, Dr. Chawla. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, President Dr. Sabnis. Thank you, uh, Dr. Keshamurthy, uh, Honorary Secretary USI. Uh, I echo the same thoughts which you have mentioned, and I'll just uh, sum up by saying a, a happy learning to all the viewers who have joined for this uh, advanced laparoscopy program. A three procedures, laparoscopy, body slap, and the partial fact me are on the list today. And uh, with Master uh, uh, Dr. C. Malikarjuna on the on the, as an operating surgeon, it will be a treat to watch. Uh, a, a happy learning to all of you. And uh, uh, my greetings to Dr. Mahindra Madari, who is there today. Uh, we'll listen to his comments also. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Chala. Now, over to Ainu. Over to Ainu for your presentations and to the tele webcast. Yes, sir. Good morning to 
all of you from hyderabad uh, we are transmitting live from the or of uh, aiinu and it's a great pleasure to have uh, professor mahendra bandari sir with us and uh, i'd like sir to request a few words and after that i'll go on to the cases sir please thank you vijay at the outset uh, uh, the first priority is to congratulate uh, ravindra sabnesh uh, keshav and the entire team arun chawla lakshman to have taken urology from where myself and venu had seen i am so happy that my dear friend venu is also present here and when i called dr mallikarjun and uh, he said there is a workshop and so i grabbed the opportunity to change a date and i am here today it reminds me of the first workshops we had participated in in nadiyad after amdavad conference in 80s sometime and before that was st johns after uti conference from there there we were demonstrating transurethral resections and kind of hiccups we had in telecasting technology has come a long way and it is really honor for me to watch uh, malikarjun's uh, skills which i know um, to really demonstrate these complex laparoscopic surgery procedures as you know close to 70% of laparoscopy is gall bladders and similarly for us our simple nephrectomies but i am so happy that so many people are very eager and keen to learn the complex laparoscopic procedures um, uh, i don't think Uh, technique matters uh, men behind the technique matters all robotically done procedures are not excellent i think it's minimally invasive only difference is the, with using the robot the brunt on the surgeon reduces and without refraining from making comments i'll once again congratulate and thank malik for inviting me and the usi for bringing it to this level of excellence which is second to none in the world and i am equally proud of it because i am more part of uh, indian urology than american urology thank you very much and i hand it over back to you uh, because malik is ready to demonstrate your radical prostatectomy uh, which i am looking forward to see thank you thank you sir for your words of wisdom so uh, we have uh, three cases uh, lined up today uh, in the advanced laparoscopic procedures so first is the uh, laparoscopic radical prostatectomy i'll just give you the case details so this is a 73 year old gentleman hypertensive with a good performance status he had obstructive lower urinary tract symptoms uh, since one year and an episode of gross painless hematuria he was on medical management elsewhere since one year and uh, when he presented to us on examination he had a grade 1 hard nodule at the right apex of the prostate his psa was slightly raised 4.46 nanogram per ml and mri showed a pyrite spore lesion in the right apex nodule the trust guided biopsy was done subsequently which showed a gleason score of 7 prostatic adenocarcinoma 4 out of 19 cores were positive a psma pet whole body scan was done which showed localized disease and his other lab values are in normal limits so planned for laparoscopic radical prostatectomy today live from gore or of ainu and i now hand over to the or uh, dr malika juna sir sir please sir bulan here on good good morning mali hi hi kesha good morning we to decrease the time uh, i think you got the uh, detail of the patient about a radical yeah. prostatectomy in a localized ca yeah. prostate and we have already positioned the ports i think i am going to show the ports for just a, uh, a minute the ports are already placed this is the pubs this is the pubs give me a scale usually usually our instruments are around 35 cm or 33 cm so the Uh, the 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 instrument half should be inside and half should be outside for that we mark a line around 15 cm away from the pubis depending upon the distinction of the abdomen and we place the ports just inside or outside or out of the line 15 to 16 cm inside and 15 to 16 cm outside 
the right side port is mostly i place it towards the midline for me to make it easy to operate and the left side port a little away from the midline so that the angle between the two ports is around 25 or 35 cm degrees and uh, 35 degrees and i uh, will have a assistant port onto the onto the other flank and this flank for passing uh, suction and other instruments so this is around 15 cm so i'll take a 16 or a 17 cm away and the telescopic port is placed above the umbilicus so that it is not in our way and uh, this is regarding the port positioning majority of the times i don't okay, use much of because you are mali shows your positioning of the patient and where are you standing yes. where your assistants be okay. majority of the times if the patient is less than 500 feet or a 500 feet i'll be standing at the at the head end of the patient and operating from the head but if the patient is going to be uh, a, a patient is a long patient in which case i'll be standing on to the right the left side of the patient and operating it that's the reason why i'm saying there are two three things which decide the height of the patient number two the distance between the umbilicus and the pubis and distensibility of the abdomen all these three factors will decide where your port positioning and where you are going to stand across the only constant of it is the distance between this point to the target point around 16 or 17 cm that is a that is a constant point rest all will change depending upon these factors clear yeah yeah, yeah. it's quite clear That's right so majority of the times i i You see, I already there was some colonic uh, uh, sigma adhesion there to the iliac fossa area, which I, uh, which I have uh, taken it down, and now I expose the to uh, the pelvis completely. How do we start off? I start always start start always with a posterior dissection. I place the catheter, and the catheter is in our in our field. We can manipulate the catheter. The patient is in a supine position; is not in a lithotomy position. I don't really believe on per perineal pressure during anastomosis. If you keep the legs together and uh, and uh, uh, in a supine position, even a nemo peritoneum will not push the perineal diaphragm down below. And I don't think we ever required a perineal push. to get the urethra up towards you so this is our standard position for laparoscopic prostatectomy how do i start off once i once i identify the two i i this internal rings this is one and the other one is there on that side that is the internal ring so most of the time there is a there is a vas which drips in from that area down like this and gets into this area so there is a vein this this vein is somehow i don't know what is the name of the vein but majority of the times we see this vein so we hold this peritoneum at that level if you leave it also you'll see a fold there that is a fold of peritoneum which will be there you just hold it and push it up so that you'll be able to stretch this peritoneum posteriorly i'll start with the posterior dissection by incising the <laughs> get it nearer right so you will always start from posterior Yes, that's it. This is a traditional thing. What I've been doing, I'm quite happy with it. I don't want to change on that. That makes my uh, uh, my life very easy. Once I come anteriorly, and it helps me in a very good and not sparing also. So I started looking only in the posterior. I'll start the section on the posterior way first. Mobilize the seminal vesicles, create a posterior plane to the prostate, and then go anterior there. You see, majority of the times you see this. This is the layers. there is a layer which is already seen this is nothing but a peritoneum what is anatomy if you see you have a peritoneum some amount of fat tissue and the posterior layer of the denominular fascia so there is already a plane existing between the two you don't need to do anything i don't go into the denominular fascia initially we don't need to go into the denominular fascia what we are doing is separating the peritoneum only nothing else we just separate the peritoneum and go towards the posterior layer of the denominator fascia i don't want to dissect the seminal vesicles directly i want to go as posterior as possible which leads me posterior to the prostate so you just go on separating the peritoneum away from the structures and you will encounter a posterior layer of the denominator fascia i see this if you look at this is a peritoneum and that is going to be the plane so a little counter traction there will open this area and there is a nice avascular plane which exists most of the time you don't require any of this uh, uh, any any of the uh, 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 um, energy sources to do this plane it is already existing what you need is you need to explore you have not entered into the denominator yet mind it we are just behind the denominator fascia which envelops the envelops the seminal vesicle and we are entering behind the denominator fascia you see this denominator fascia with seminal vesicle now there this is the posterior layer of the denominator fascia which envelops the the seminal vesicle come down here yeah okay 
So I am not going to do anything to the seminal vesicle or vas at this moment. I just go on dissecting posterior to them. Come up, come up, push up. Yes, I am just going posterior to them and trying to dissect as posterior as possible. This, you see, the mistake sometimes people do is to catch the seminal vesicle and start dissecting it away. That prevents you to dissect further posteriorly because they start falling forwards and you will not be able to dissect posteriorly later. So this is the posterior layer of the denominal fascia, which is encasing the seminal vesicle, and we are going posterior to it as low as possible. It may not be possible to reach very low in a in a in a laparoscopy as we do in uh, 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 in robotic. Robotic, we can turn the 30 degree down, and we can have a flexible instruments, and then you can go right posterior. But that sort of a thing might not be possible in laparoscopy because. Uh, you will have some limitation regarding the freedom of movement is concerned. Mali, is there any difference? You do both robotic and laparoscopy. Is there a difference yes. in your port positioning or uh, positioning of the patient or anything different from robot and laparoscopy? I do. I, I do a port position. See, I do it on SI. So I have to pick up, a, keep a patient on lithotomy to get the robot inside. So in in a in a in a in a, in a robotic, it's always a lithotomy position. Whereas in a in a, in a laparoscopy, I do it only in a supine position. That's all. I don't think there is any way different. See this. Now I'll be exposing the posterior. This is the posterior layer. I've gone up beyond the seminal vesicles now. I'm coming towards between the rectum and the prostate here. So that if you see this. That is a layer. This is posterior to the prostate. We have gone beyond. These are the similar vesicles. This is the vas. We have gone beyond, and I try to go as low as possible here. I may enter the denominal fascia with this sort of a movement here, depending upon the uh, amount of fibrosis posterior to the denominal fascia, which is variable in Indian population. What you see is nothing but the perirectal fat here. Can, uh, what you see is nothing but a thin layer of the denominal fascia and the perirectal fat there. Right? So I've gone as deep as possible. I don't think I can see further. I'll go as deep as possible. Right. I'll come laterally now. Keeping that apex there, now I come laterally and start dissecting towards the lateral aspects. Come down. Right? Come as, don't dissect this away. Don't dissect this away. Don't, mistake is to dissect away the seminal vesicles and they're falling forward and start pulling them to the, to the most uh, uh, unawkward positions. So push it away as low, as laterally as possible. At one point, you end up in opening the denular fascia and seeing the seminal vesicles. Same thing I'm going to do now. I'm done. Yes. See that? That is, a, that is the genome area which is covering the seminal vesicle and that is I'm dissecting behind that area. So at this moment, at this, once the seminal vesicle is over, when it comes to the posterior side of the prostate, the demon willer will have two layers with the, the layer which is covering the seminal vesicle and the layer which is there anterior to the rectum. And those two layers are the two layers which we saw here when we go went, went to the apexia. This is it. This is one layer on, into the, into, onto the prostate and another layer. Can you see that now? I think it's very small. Yes, that is it. One layer behind the prostate and one layer in front of the perirectal fat. They're very flimsy layers. Don't think majority of the times we consider it as one. We don't consider it as two, but anatomically they are two. Because it's nothing but the compression of the tissue embryologically which happens between the two, the rectum developing and this thing, and that will lead to that sort of a layering. Yes. So I come later, as little as possible. For the delegates, if you have any questions, please put it on the chat box. I will, we will pass it on to Dr. Malikarjun. Yes. How long back was the biopsy done, Mali? Usually I give it a time of weeks, not before. I don't operate before four weeks after the biopsy. It is, they say they can do it uh, early at one week, but I don't try because it doesn't appear to be because any small problem or this thing, what we come across afterwards, you always be blaming for our decision rather than the truth which lies there. Come. Okay. Right. 
I think I've come fairly decently little. Now I open the thing and get into the penile vella fascia inside. This is the vas now. So identify the vas and create a plane next to the vas. Yes. Yes. Go as little as possible. Don't go too near to the bladder. Go as little as possible. That exposes your tip of the seminal vesicle easily. So go as lateral as possible. Too lateral, you'll end up in getting ureter. Please don't go too lateral, but pull it and see as lateral as possible so that. Yes. Ali, is this uh, MRI done pre biopsy or post biopsy? This MRI is done pre biopsy. I make it a point if I find it. No, what I do is if I, my, my things are very clear. The low PSA value. Candidate most likely for a radical prostate in case it is going to be a, 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 a positive. And uh, if I find a possible nodule and I find it can be a low, a, a low stage disease, I'll do a MRI beforehand and before biopsy. Helps in two regard, anyway, the, the data, whatever it is, the helps me in two regard, number one, to understand the area where I should not be missing. That is one thing which is very clear. I'll be happy that I'm not missing that area. There is some amount of. There's a question from and Dr. Surajit. He's asking, what are the tips to avoid ureteric injury during seminal vesicle dissection? Don't go too lateral. That's all. Don't go too lateral. Don't go too lateral. Don't go too lateral. There's nothing. I've injured one ureter in my life. Don't go too lateral. This is the tip of the seminal vesicle. People do a clipping, etc., whatever. Uh, to preserve the nerves, but I don't do it routinely. I don't know. I never found it. So uh, I don't know. And I could not be saying that. I say that there is always a tainting of the uh, nerves at this point. So they use a clip to control the result of the seminal vesicle anyway. Dr. Prem Gawali is asking, what is the setting of the monopolar cautery of yours? It's a 40, 40 cutting and uh, 25 coagulation, I think. Come here. And to the I to ask you the question, Sir. which uh, which was put to uh, Inder Birgil, that when yes. he shifted from laparoscopy to robotic, and when he was asked to demonstrate laparoscopic uh, uh, radical prostatectomy in one of the Ahmedabad uh, lab bureau workshop, and then he said, "No, don't tell me to demonstrate lab. If you if you want me to demonstrate lab, it is better you call somebody else because I am not doing lab and I don't." I'm not confident of doing it. He was the one who pioneered, he was a pioneer and he started lab prostatectomy. Yes. Now you are doing both lab and robotics. So what is your opinion? He was asked also in the Asian Congress that in case if patient demands that uh, you do laparoscopy or if robot is not working, will you convert to lab and then do it? He said, no, I will cancel the case and do it afterwards. No, no, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do. I'll do. I'll do. No, I have not come to that stage. Possibly 10 years down, I come to that stage, I'll cancel the case. But at present, I'll do, I'll do it a laparoscopic and finish up the case. So it's a matter of time you will come to that stage. Yeah, basically, what happens is, see, he tell you, uh, we do somewhere around 10 to 15 prostates per month, say, say 10 to 12 prostates a month. If I start doing only robotic and I do an occasional laparoscopy, my laparoscopic skill of doing a prostatectomy. <laughs> I'll do continuous to do half, per, half uh, partials as uh, uh, laparoscopy and half as robotic. But uh, prostates, 98% of them are uh, robotic and the uh, rest of the things are going to be laparoscopy. I'm going to fail. That's, that's bound to happen. So to keep it alive, you may do both the things together, but we don't have so much of a volume, nor patience to do. That's the reason why. And second thing is, if you start training a system, in fact, in fact, the, Dr. Bandari is here. He is looking at that aspect. In fact, the basic yeah, visit so actually, told me. Actually, I want uh, the comment of uh, Bandari sir also on this aspect. Because now in America, right. it is virtually laparoscopy is dead. So what is the comment uh, on this aspect, sir? Thank you for asking me. Thank you. My answer is that uh, let's not look at techniques. Let's look at the outcome. I yes. don't care if I have to have a prostatectomy. I would go to surgeon, choose my surgeon and leave it to him. Because as long as he follows the okay. surgical principles and even does an open prostatectomy, which even now is equally popular in the United States with the older generation of surgeons, I'm fine with it. So I think uh, 
uh, I would agree with uh, Malik that urologists, particularly the younger ones, should learn all the techniques and keep options with them because we deal with very economically diverse population. And I don't think I would also agree being 16 years there to have no penicia. And Gil was right because we also asked him, I put him in a symposium in one of the VGRs, uh, Vertiquity Global Robotics meeting in 2012. And I created a debate between him and Palni Velu. And Gil said, I don't want to talk about laparoscopy. That is a gone by thing. And he is an excellent laparoscopic. Uh, complex uh, surgery man as well as robotics. So I think uh, let this be uh, diverted from techniques and that view I hold for every robot, uh, every procedure. If there is a big staghorn and if you're comfortable clearing patient in one go, go ahead and do that. Technique doesn't matter that much as the outcome. Okay. Malik, the question uh, to you related to that, uh, uh, when you critically analyze the outcome of uh, the skill, you are the uh, laparoscopic skill person and robotic skill person. So when the skill is equivalent, uh, when you analyze your robotic and the uh, laparoscopic outcome in terms of in uh, continence, in terms of uh, erection, in, in terms of uh, the margin positivity and uh, recovery and etc., what difference do you find between two techniques? Early continence is better with robot, at least in my cases. Possibly I can't say that it's because of laparoscopic or robot, but basically because the numbers what I'm doing are more in robotic. The numbers what I'm doing are much less in laparoscopy. That's the reason why it is happening. I don't say that it makes a difference. Had I been doing only laparoscopy, possibly my numbers would have been the same. I, I tell you, you see, the, the whole thing entirely depends upon how you have been practicing yourself on. If you have been practicing only on laparoscopy and you do wonder on laparoscopy alone, uh, I, this alone may not be of, of a great, uh, I don't think a robot alone will make a great difference, but it's a number. I think the robot makes majority of the surgeons to get that learning experience shorter, whereas laparoscopy makes it longer. That's the only difference. Once that is passed across, I think everything is going to be the same. But Mali, how do you, do you have a robot with you? How do you yes. decide on the patient that I will do a lap or I will do a robot on that patient? No, that choice I'll give only for partials, but not for uh, uh, not for uh, laparoscopic radical prostate. Prostate, I prefer a robotic only, mostly. I, I prefer uh, partials, larger cases, uh, renal tumors, etc., larger tumors, location, etc. <laughs> robotic or uh, laparoscopy. Larger tumors, I prefer a uh, laparoscopy, whereas smaller tumors, I prefer a uh, uh, robot. So there's a question from one of the delegates. He's asking, will you use zero degree telescope for posterior dissection? No, I don't. I use only one telescope and I think that's 30. The other question from Dr. Arif Ansari is, whether harmonic dissection is better as compared to monopolar. Uh, I don't know what by feeling is. You see, one thing you should understand, all these energy sources uh, uh, will, will, will blur away the planes, anatomical planes. The only thing which keeps is a good is the scissor. And I need for a, for a radical prostate, I think I've started off with a bipolar uh, uh, bipolar on my on my left hand and a uh, monopolar in my in my right hand and this is what I require for any radical prostate. I don't need any energy for any radical prostate most of the time. I don't use it, but uh, rest of the things I have our own choices depending upon what you use for. But radical prostate is one thing. You see, you where do you need such sort of an energy? If anatomy, if you look at anatomy, what is that vessel which is going to trouble you in any any fashion which requires a great big energy? source, which is that vessel which you come across? You have, don't have a named vessel also coming across at any point of time. Why do you need an energy source? What you require is a good anatomical knowledge and a dissection into a plane. That's all. Nothing more. So I don't consider that energy source will make a difference. Actually, we feel that it makes bloodless, but in fact, it bloods the planes and makes your life much more difficult. In fact, the planes are gone and you don't know where you are. At least I'll be able to see the planes 
which will be better off when I do a monopolar uh, cutting like this. So what I've done till now is going to be mobilize the seminal vesicles right up to that uh, base of intraprostatic extension. Don't go too later, otherwise you enter the prostate here. But at the same time, don't do too less, otherwise your bladder neck dissection, posterior dissection will become difficult. So you need to have a balance here where you have to stop. When you start posterior dissection, where you have to stop, you need to have a balance. So I don't think an energy source makes a difference for me at all in radical prostatectomy because there's hardly anything to require to seal off. If I look at this, for this, where is one vessel? You show me one vessel which requires an energy source here. There's nothing. So I don't need anything here. Chalo, come back, clean the plant. We're going to drop the bladder now. The first step of posterior dissection is over. Come fast. But if you have to choose to do nerve sparing radical prostatectomy, would you choose robotics than laparoscopy? Yeah, of course. I would love because my vision and possibly my magnification is going to be better off. I'll be happy to see, uh, happy to uh, uh, have a nerve sparing with a, uh, with a uh, robotic, uh, sorry, robotic than laparoscopy. That's it. Okay, now I'm going to drop the bladder. That, yeah. Okay, so I, now I made a 30 degree up. My lens is 30 degree up. So how I start? I start always in the side of the uh, side of this uh, median umbilical ligament. You incise the peritoneum. Santa, pull it down. Incise the peritoneum and go right up to the internal ring, not less. People start short and bladder is not dropped properly. One of the best, one of the basic requisites of doing a good uh, uh, radical prostatectomy is dropping the bladder right up to the bottom, right up to the internal ring. That gives you a better exposure and the assistant will be able to pass all the instruments easily. So I'll divide this peritoneum right at the internal ring. You got saw that? And then you see the plane. Another mistake what most of the thing people do is people going too deep, thinking that they don't want to open the bladder and they, they go posterior to the rectus sheath, anterior to the rectus sheath also and get into that muzzle plane, which is not necessary. So there is a natural plane which exists. That's the reason why I came here. There's a natural plane which exists. I'm not doing anything. I'm just separating it. You'll find a natural plane between the bladder and the thing on, on both the sides. So that, that's how you start creating a plane and then you know where you can go around. So I start dividing the, the, the median line umbilical ligament on one side. Sorry, this is good. Close to the, this is close to the thing. Can we clean it once? No, it's okay. Come. So the median umbilical ligament is divided on this side. It's divided. It's very well seen. The same thing, I cross it across onto the midline in the same plane what I created. Yes, come back. Go to the other side now. Already, I think I already divided right up to the other side. Hold it. Other side, umbral ligament, and I'm going to divide the peritoneum also in the same regard. This is a median umbilical ligament, and I'm going to divide the peritoneum there next to it. So this is what you should you see. The, in this in this dissection, the only thing to be understood is don't go too anterior, thinking that you will injure the bladder. You end up in doing a mistake of taking out the posterior rectus sheath along with you, along with the bladder, which is not correct. So the I, I better way is to open this peritoneum next to that median umbilical ligament. This peritoneum, you will get into that uh, layer easily, and you will be able to do it much easier. So I will drop it right up to the internal ring, and then drop the bladder completely. Second thing, it's never this sheet, the area behind the anterior abdominal wall and the retro regio, space of regios are not continuous. They are discontinuous. They are never continuous. It is, there is no common space between the thing. A, a hematoma in the regio, space of regios doesn't come onto the, uh, doesn't come onto the uh, abdominal wall. So you'll be at the level of pubic bone, you'll be entering into a separate sheath. You'll find inferior epigastrics there on both the sides. 
and you will be finding a separate plane when you reach the uh, 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 reach the pubic symphysis at one point. That is the space of radius. Now I'm going to do that. I'm going to open that area. Then you'll be able to see the pubic bone in space of radius very clearly. That's a plane which is there. That fat is going to be different. This is the space of radius, and that is going to be different. And this area is going to be different. This is what there's no confusion. It is not, both are not same. It doesn't uh, translate directly from above downwards. If there is a specific area, I see this pubic bone, there's a specific area here which just separates the space of radius completely. You open it and you, you, you see a sub, this is a different fat what you see and there's a different fat what you see here. Both are not same. So getting into that area is very important. Identifying that area is very important and dissecting it right up to an area where you'll be able to see a, a, you'll be able to see a external like vein here that is very necessary you will see an external like vein here if you divide this completely you will be able to see an external like vein here okay that is the place where the external like vein will come that's okay so have we dissected and dropped the bladder completely and trying to do that yeah yeah uh, yeah there is nothing here. Okay. But what percentage of patients you still do lab radicals? Hardly less. It's not even ten percent. I think my radic my lab radicals have become mostly only for workshops like this. So now you have reached the true space of radius. That's a true space of radius. What you are seeing, you are seeing the. Right. Clean this, no? Right. We just clean it up. Yeah. You're done. Uh, is the is the transmission is okay for you? Fantastic, it is. Good, thank you. So, Malik, what, what another system, thing? What system are you using, Malik? It's Olympus. Uh, it's Olympus. It's Olympus. Everything is Olympus. Is it four K or uh, it's? A, no, no, it's a regular HDF Olympus. Regular HD. Regular HDF Olympus. It's a regular HD of Olympus, nothing more. So you'll see a ILX and then well, how, how much you should expose, how much you need to drop. That is a point to be seen. You'll see the both obturator foramina here. That's an obturator foramina, obturator wells going into the obturator foramina here. That is necessary if you are planning for your uh, uh, node dissection. So there is some, some sort of an addition here. Let us take it off. Yes, that's an obturator for Anna here again. Okay, I think I'm fine with it now. Okay, that's an obturator vessel, an obturator for Anna there. I'll expose that and expose that. Okay. Okay, okay. Now, having done this, now we see this is going to be the bladder. That's going to be a bladder which is pulled. Okay, you're going to have a bladder which is going to get pulled here on either side, wherever you want. And I'll show some anatomy here to, for, for purposes. Like, okay, let me, the next step is going to be having exposed both the obturator foramen on either side. This is the two obturator foramen, bladder being dropped away from the, from the uh, pubic bone and some amount of hemostasis secured in this area because space of radius do contain some vessels all the time, all the time, okay? Now what you have is this fat which is surrounding onto the, fat, uh, onto the prostate and the bladder neck area has to be taken away. So this fat is being taken away right from the pubis and the thing. Come now. So you'll see a vessel which comes in the midline. It's a superficial vessel. This is a vessel between the two puboprostatic ligaments. And I'll show you, this is a puboprostatic ligament. That's a small foramen and puboprostatic between the puboprostatic ligaments, right? 
and there is one more pubo-prostatic. That's a pubo-prostatic ligament here. This is a pubo-prostatic ligament, and there is a small vein which comes across in that area, which is going to be diathermized. Sometimes it troubles. Sometimes it is small, but sometimes it is too big and troubles. Okay, then now we need to take off all this fat and expose the endopelvic fascia completely. What we do is that later is different, but what we need to do is exposing it completely. Come nearer. Completely. I'm showing the endopelvic fascia and I'll show you the pedicle of the prostate. That's endopelvic fascia which is getting exposed. Right. Come down. So this side I finished and this side I'll do it now. All this fat has to come out. That makes your life easier and it looks better also. Right. Get this fat away. Get this fat away. I'll show you the anatomy here. There's a beautiful anatomy that needs to be understood. People think about, uh, it, it, it's a simple way of looking at prosthetic anatomy, which I'll show. Hopefully the planes will be better for me to demonstrate that. Shanta could get down the, uh, that's it. Just lay, lay a bit. So this fat, what is there in front of the prostate is being taken out. To your side, don't pull. Okay. Okay, there's an attachment at the level of bladder neck. This fat is firmly attached to the muscle in the bladder neck. It's been be taken out. And that fat next to the bladder neck is again. It's clear now? It is clear, it's clear. Okay, the whole fat on the in front of the prostate and the bladder neck area is taken out. Okay. We don't need a much of a, uh, uh, we don't need any, um, I was telling you, you know, we don't need much of energy sources in this sort of a dissection because we hardly have anything specific or anything very big or anything that bleeds massively, which requires, and even though bleed like DVC, they cannot be managed with the, uh, uh, managed with the uh, uh, energy sources. That's it. This fat, I'll just leave it. Sometimes there may be one of the nodes there. It will be sent for histopathology, but I'll leave it there now here. That's an area which I leave. Okay, leaving now. Now I'll show, I want to show some sort of an anatomy which we need to look at. Okay? Identify the structures now. Come down. That's it. Okay, if I identify the structures, come down. This is the puboprostatic ligament. This one side, right on the left side. That's a puboprostatic ligament on the right side. And this is a deep venous complex in between. And these two puboprostatic ligaments will come and fuse at one point, and that is the bladder neck. It is there were two ways of identifying the bladder neck. Either you pull the catheter and show, or, or, or the, uh, identify the area where. No, don't just pull the catheter. Loosen it up. Loosen it up. One minute. Loosen it up and slowly pull it. Slowly pull it. Push it inside first. Yes, the balloon is inside. Slow, slowly pull it. Ah. Slow, slow. Yes, don't pull it too much. Everything moves. So if you pull it gently, this is the area where the, the thing is stopping. And it's the same area where the, the puboprostatic ligament uh, come and fuse in the midline. So that is the area of the bladder neck. And that's where I start my dissection. Okay, that's one, one point which I wanted to say. And the second thing is going to be come, come to this side. Let us look at the anatomy in this area. We are talking about endopelvic fascia and we all, we are all concerned about endopelvic fascia anatomy, right? We are looking at that anatomy now completely. Most of the time, we don't know what to be done here. Endopelvic fascia has got multiple layers, like rather two layers at least to be identified. One between surrounding the prostate and another surrounding onto the, going onto the pelvic wall. There is a beautiful plane between the two layers. I'll show you. There is a plane between the two layers which separate off. I'll show you that. Yes, 
this is one layer which is there on the pelvic wall this is on the thing on side on the on the side of the prostate which is encasing the prostatic vessels and these are the two layers which are there are you able to see that yes you got it so you will right? not cut this the endopelvic fascia at this juncture i am not cut it i am just showing you the anatomy there i'll cut at one point i'll show you how to preserve as much tissues as possible this is an early ca prostate i am not bothered about his erection he is least concerned about it but i am more concerned about his uh, 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 his continence which also depends upon this nervous supply so i want to preserve as many nerves as possible without compromise on this section so if you look at the two layers of endopelvic fascia which separate very well sometimes if the prostatitis is bad you will not be able to see but otherwise you can see this very facial layers very well on both sides so that is the facial layers between which i can dissect and come towards the anterior aspect here towards the anterior aspect and divide this pubic prostatic attachment here. this is one way of doing a dissection laterally i'll show you a similar thing on the other side okay come here come nearer yes sometimes it is much easy better and very well seen come nearer so that now that's one layer yeah. of endopelvic fascia and this is another layer of endo uh, push it down another layer of endopelvic fascia which is encasing the prostate and the vessels also i can create one more plane this is called you call if you do this way it is interfacial if you go across this area that is extra facial if i create a plane behind this veins on the surface of the prostate that is intrafacial so there are many levels like ash has shown but for a simpler purpose on a laparoscopic scale these are the three ways of pushing ourselves in three layers so that you saw that yeah, three yeah. Plane Which existing between the two layers of the endopelvic fascia? Come down here, come down here, here, here. Get the ah uh, suction there. And what you see is is going to be the prostatic pedicle coming in this direction, and just below that is going to be the neurovascular bundle. So when you do an interfacial, you start a dissection like this, but you enter into the into the into this endopelvic fascia and try to save one side bundle at least. This is what we do in robotic. it's not easy to do it in laparoscopic but in laparoscopy the better way is to do is an intrafacial dissection getting down inside this inside this area and taking away this veins separately onto the other side that is done here that can be started off here hold this vessels and push it on that side and start dissecting onto this uh, on the surface of the prostate and get onto the plane onto the surface of the prostate that's going to be after bladder neck division now you got the point here now i think it's clear it is clear so what i am trying to do now is an interfacial dissection so i am going to divide this uh, pubic prostatic ligaments to certain extent here exposing the surface of the area so i need a better scissor that's it okay same thing here right Is that to me? That that to me? Hmm. Right. That's a problem. Oh, I opened into a vein. Doesn't matter. We'll close it later. It is only for my sake to create a plane into this area. I didn't want a diathermia. Okay. Let us see if I can close this to such time. Okay, come down. So I'm going towards the apex. <clears throat> okay. Right. Leave it. Yeah. is always be on the left side is the vein there 
Okay. Come nearer. So we are on the surface of the prostate here. Now you are looking at, you see, uh, uh, Keshav, yeah. I was looking at one between the two layers, right? Yes, yes. I saw you between the two layers. Now if I can get between, inside this layer, you will get veins and possibly I can take out on the surface of the prostate, I can, I can save a bundle. You saw the surface of the prostate come nearer? Yes. That's the surface of the prostate. Yeah. That's the surface of the prostate where I can think about saving a nerve bundle on that side. That I'll show you at the end. It doesn't matter. Let us think about, suck it up and think about opening the bladder now. I'll take a bite of the uh, uh, this thing at the end. But how do you, apart from what you told about the pubic ligaments coming and joining, that is your bladder neck. How do you decide mm. that this is the bladder neck area where you will open up? No, this is, this is the only two things. One is you come towards that area and you see that it is bladder neck. And other thing is going to be opening the, uh, uh, pulling the, pulling the catheter. You will find a nice plane between the two. I'll show you. You will show you. You see, most of the time we start cutting with a, uh, come nearer. We start cutting with a uh, uh, harmonic or anything. You can't see any plane between the two. There is a nice plane between the bladder and the prostate, which is very well elicitable, which is there. I'll show you that now in a moment. Saw that? That's a separation between the bladder and the prostate coming up. Saw so that? Yeah. That's a prostate. That's a prostate what is coming up in front of you. And this is the bladder which is coming away. Early disease, it's there in the, in the, in the, in the apex, not there in the, any other part of the prostate, very early disease. So I am I am I am trying I am trying to walk close to the prostate. That's all. So that this is the muzzle here on this side, and this is the prostate on this side. You got the thing playing very well. Right. right. I'll do it on the other side now. And possibly I may preserve. Uh, depending, he has a small median lobe. If possible, I don't think I'll be able to. You should be able to identify this plane where it's going to end. See this. These are the veins which go onto the surface of the prostate and go into the pedicle. So the thing stops there. You should not go beyond it. And that is going to be your, your place where the prostate ends. You should be able to understand that. You should be able to realize that point. Without going, getting inside is going to be difficult. So this is the plane between the prostate and the bladder. You can see the bladder muscles very well there. Got me? So this is the bladder neck. What okay. you see is the bladder neck here. And come okay. here on this side. Suck here. Yes, suck there. So I'm just separating this bladder away from the prostate. And try to create a plane. See, in a robotic surgery, majority of the times we end up in entering into the bladder directly and refashioning the bladder neck, which is, and I don't see people doing, uh, uh, creating this sort of a plane. This sort of a plane is done when you think about a good intrafacial dissection and try to create a good plane between the bladder and the, and the prostate. So you'll be able to see it separately. And I can go through this into that area where posteriorly we, could, we saw the thing. This is the same area where I can go posteriorly and get into it, get into that area. So if you pull the catheter, see the catheter where it is? The catheter will be there inside this. You got me? But what is okay. the advantage? What is the advantage of dissecting like this rather than opening up the bladder and then doing it? Where do you want to see? You want to do it. You can do it off. You create a large bladder neck. There is a possibility that the continence is better off when you create some, retain this, uh, this circular fibers of the bladder at, along with it. Okay. You'll have a smaller, smaller, uh, this thing, which is going to be seen in front of you. Is it going to be that robotic you can suture easily and that's why they would open and uh, it's oh, not yeah, that easy that's in that's that process. No, it depends upon the case, what you select and which sort of a case you are doing. If you have a nice early case where you can venture out to be near the, oh shit, you have already entered the product. 
it is already gone into the bladder hmm. right this is anyway you got a good huge big bladder neck for as you asked for okay now i get into this plane and uh, enlarge the plane construction no sorry when you come close to the pedicle what are the tips yeah that's what i am going to come now i'll come there i'll come there and tell you see what i have done till now is going to be i opened the bladder anyway i thought i'm nearing to the bladder neck but it was a mistake and i went into the bladder directly doesn't matter sister pull the catheter put a artery forceps there pull it pull that right pull it ha uh, pull it so we are now what we are trying to do we need to separate the bladder from this area and then only we'll be able to get the this thing so we need to incise the posterior bladder wall to get that area where is the ureteric orifice this is the ureteric orifice that's a ureteric orifice so we are well away from it right this side this is a question from dr madhav tiwari do you ever decide on intra inter or extra facial dissection based on intra op findings one is a pre op mri will give you a finding and uh, depending upon the staging of the disease you take a call on we don't decide it much uh, most of the time we suppose this is a right side disease i don't want to do anything uh, 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 extraordinary to keep the nerves on the right side especially the apex on the left side i try to do it so you need to assess according to the mri according to the stage of the disease location is it bilateral at what place it is located so reading an mri especially in a localized disease when you think about nerve sparing is mandatory i'll show you the uh, the trick of uh, identifying the pedicle right you wanted i'll just going to come yeah. down a little bloody field i'm sorry to this, say that i'm just dissecting let me dissect this uh, muscle away from the prostate don't go to the center as it is shown in most of the robotics go to the periphery from periphery come to the center yes now you have gone into the area so that it's an area yes. behind the prostate and yes. that areolar tissue where you have opened into that posterior side you got my point correct you saw that that's a seminal vesicle etc there so that will give you a confidence this is what i said when you are doing a posterior bladder neck dissection you will be confident if you have done a posterior dissection this is the posterior dissection there it's already done so this will give you how much depth you need to cut so laterally you make a point later you make a point and come down to the center you know how much you need to cut beforehand otherwise in the center if you start do going ahead you don't know at what depth you are going to get it off this is a fixed depth on the sides it is a fixed depth whereas in the center it may not be a fixed depth and now let me let me take this off and tell you where the pedicles okay where the pedicles lie suppose if i take an away this way and you saw no suction ah suck everything we separated these two layers of the uh, layers of the uh, endopelvic fascia here you saw that yes these are the layers of pelvic fascia which are dissected away okay wait 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 okay and now this is the pedicle what you see here is nothing but the prostatic pedicle if you are not really looking at uh, nerve sparing or anything you just clip this pedicle that's all this is a prostatic pedicle so i'll show you that once i lift the seminal vesicles through the this thing and uh, get down the bladder completely the same thing happens here also 
if you look into the pedicle i'll show you where it lies come down yeah you you created a you created a window between the two layers of the endopelvic fascia and now you create a window posterior to the bladder wait a minute i'm holding that yes that's a bladder which is uh, this is the posterior part of the bladder and this is going to be the pedicle of the prostate on this side so that's how you get into the pedicle i'm sorry it's a little bloody here today where i did a mistake i don't know but anyway let me separate this bladder away right i think the bladder is shifted away okay now i get my seminal vesicle subball okay get a get a little cleaning boss it's a lot of blood get the catheter behind get the catheter behind okay let's look into the light side now suck suck are you able to have a clear vision get me a gauze piece let me clear it up a little get me a gauze piece for for actually for uh, sake of demonstration i'm putting a gauze piece to mop it up completely i don't need a thing otherwise i'm just mopping it up come okay i'm holding the uh, right seminal vesicle now clear yes so this is the this is the posterior surface of the prostate which i have already dissected now it is more evident and you can see that i have gone in front of the denonular fascia i am not going i have not opened the denonular fascia posterior layer yet if i open this flimsy layer you'll see the fat there that's a perirectal fat which is there you got me now correct is it clear yes sorry okay now i need to clear the pedicle now i need to see that pedicle is complete right hold it that way a pull on the seminal vesicle and lateral dissection much more lateral dissection which gets me as laterally as possible yes that's the side of the prostate and this is the where you start dissecting when you want to do a, that uh, regius sparing prostatectomy you come laterally and come up in this direction you will form for a regius sparing prostatectomy you are already on the posterior surface of the prostate no that's it okay come down now so you are going to dissect this now and clip it clip sister sister okay so the first clip usually we don't need to keep more than two to three clips for the prosthetic pedicle you don't need bigger than that right come nearer come nearer is a denonular fascia i open the denonular now i think it's a perirectal fat already seen now okay it got torn it's fine come down now down the left side now so the next is going to be the pedicle now looking at where i have to go if i take off these two layers as towards the pelvis i'm left behind okay right 
come down this is going to be give me give me give me give me a traction here clip that's going to be the first clip onto the pedicle right yes okay come down come nearer now the second clip is going to be somewhere here i'm just trying to see what i can save here okay give me a second clip come down come nearer let me let me this it tell it yes ha ah. second clip that's it so most of the time two clips onto the prostate should be good enough to take off the prostate from the the pedicles i think i may need a one more clip here for this patient let me see yes that's the side of the prostate that's a layer what i wanted to preserve okay that's a layer what i wanted to preserve there let's go on give me a clip now in the last clip i should be clipping this pedicle i'm not done any great attempts to preserve too many nerves or anything had it been i would have gone much more much more inside this not not like this so this is the artery of the renovascular uh, this uh, bundle which is already been taken care of so i have not done a great nerve preservation except other than that 5% of the nerves which comes around next to the prostate or on to the other side of the layer give me one more clip come down come down come down on that side yes but right. give me a clip yes come nearer yeah okay that's a separation of the neurovascular bundle part i have not preserved much of it right whatever is left to behind it will get preserved i'm traction here okay traction here usually the apex part of the prostate as not having any covering it just slips off without any problem you don't need any any more energy there to because there is hardly any adhesions there i am dividing the denoidal fascia to stay back under the denoidal fascia that's it i think i come down to the apex there let me see where all i'll finish the apex and come to the left side right hold it yes yes there appears to be a prostate there so let me divide that fascia there there is a prostate there okay 
this is on this side and come to the next side now. Okay. So you go on doing the separation posteriorly. And then you expose the pedicle here. Come down this way, hold it. Is it get me the get me the clip? Clip here. Right. Okay, come nearer, clip. Put the two clips and then come near the prostate now. The assistant also plays a very major role. I think Gauss is with you now. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course, he's, a, he's actually the major role. In <laughs> fact, <laughs> if you can't, otherwise you can't finish this case. <laughs> assistant plays a major role here because you are your four hands working. Never think that you are two hands working. It's always four hands working in prostate, in any, this sort of a surgery, come down, ah, yes. Now we have one more clip which needs to be done to that area. Right. Come near it. You are staying close to the prostate and trying to get the things. Look to me. There's some screen sharing this. Right. Yes. Okay. Now we'll see the posterior part. Hello. I think I've done a fairly posterior section is complete. Let me see. Lift up. Hmm. So we are showing 30 degree down and seeing onto the posterior surface of the prostate. Yes. 30 degree down and seeing the posterior surface of the prostate. And trying to get away all the tissue in the apical area. Clear now? 
Yeah, Muli. Yeah, I think I've done up to the apical area. Yeah, that's enough. Now I come to the DVC. Now posterior dissection done, side dissection done. I need a DVC clip now. I need a DVC stitch now. I need to divide the divide the pubic prosthetic a little. Come down. But some of them don't like it, the DVCs. Yeah, I know, but really? most of the time. Even robotic. I don't like it when I do a robotic. In laparoscopy, what happens is to keep the visual clean, it's always better to like a DVC. It keeps your field clean. You can, you can, it's, it's a matter of, in fact, in, in my robotic surgery, I don't like a DVC. I suture it at the end. But in laparoscopy, what happens is it looks nice when you divide it off and you are able to see the uh, nice field anteriorly. Right side apex is a tumor. There is a nodule which we saw when we did an apical dissection there. In fact, I think I opened the capsule at one point also. I should be careful. Okay. So having done this now, I'll be holding my, my uh, DVC with this grasper. If it comes into one bite, that's enough. I've done enough dissection so that I can think about uh, I can think about diagating the DVC. Let me do this side dissection also at the same time, which will be taking it away. This muzzle, you see this puboprosthaticus muzzle? Yeah. This is what the puboprosthaticus and puboerythralis. It comes onto the prostate as a detrusor apron. That is that is that is the puboprosthetic and urethralis muzzle. This muscle is a part of the levator RNA. Keeping that will be improving our continence. And what I'm trying to do is. I'm, I'm going to separate it away from that side and come, uh, hold it, separate it and keep it intact. The, don't damage that muscle. That is one, one muscle which is necessary for, see this, this muscle. I'm talking about this muscle. This is a puboprostaticus, which it comes onto this. If it is puboerythralis, it's onto the prostate and it has got inherent uh, uh, attachments onto the, onto the prostate called, that's called detrusor apron. So keeping this muscle intact is very essential for continence, saw that? And you'll see the DVC and the urethra here. Am I clear? Yeah, it's very good. This, right. this Come down. Good. The same thing on the other side also. I see See that the that puboprostatic muscle is seen. It is separated away from the prostate. Come nearer, I'll show you that. Here, that is a muscle there. Usually, it is seen next to the urethra and at the, at the level of apex of the prostate. Right. Okay, give me a stitch for the DVC. Hmm. Hold it. One more. So I take a vicaryl for the suture of the DVC. What I'm going to do is keep a, keep the needle there. Hold the needle now. It comes into the correct direction. You need to get a correct direction happening. That's very, very important. Just I need a reducer. Okay, come nearer. Where am I? That's a muzzle. I don't want to take out the muzzle. I want to I want to take only the uh, only the thing there. It has to come just next to the. Yes, it has come below the. You got it. It has yes. not taken the muzzle. It has come below it. Just take it out now, sister. Just move the catheter in and out and see. By any chance, I've taken out the catheter. I don't think I have not taken because the way that this thing went in is not in that direction. Moved? Not, no, it's moving? Right. So now I'll, okay. So 
Okay, the three DVC which is tied. I'll take one more bite after this. Okay. I'll take one more bite for a stability. Okay. Come on. Okay. Somebody's phone. Okay. So DVC, DVC uh, ligation will make it a little more clearer. That's all, nothing more than that. Say this to me. Uh, right. Okay, suction. And uh, give me a dab bipolar, scissor. Come nearer. Anything more? Keshav? No. Hmm. Can, how do you preserve the extra length of the urethra? I'll show you that. Now I've come to a point where everything is mobilized everywhere. I need a traction onto the teria so that I can identify myself. There's a small bleeder which is there that will stop uh, that stop bleeding the moment I, I uh, take away the tra traction on it. Most of the time they continue to bleed till I have a traction. Okay, leave it. That's fine. Come nearer. Now I'm going to divide... I was talking about for juniors the way the scissor is held. The scissor is convexity towards the prostate, okay, concavity upwards, so that you don't enter the prostate. Come nearer. There's a distinct plane between the uh, uh, between the uh, uh, prostate and the DVC. They're not really fused. There's a distinct plane existing between the two. You'll be able to differentiate it. There's no doubt about it. Come nearer. Come nearer. I'll also show you that. Come. Where is it? Ah. There's a distinct plane. You come nearer and see. I'm just taking a scissor and dividing it to show that plane. Are you able to see? Yeah, we are able to see. The only thing you should not enter the but prostate. But Mali, what I have noticed is the movements are more in lab than in robotic here when we are watching. Of course. Movements are more in lab, definitely more in lab. The robotic movements are more fun. But robot is easy. I cut my DVs already. Oh, the suture has been cut. Okay, the second bite has been cut. It's okay. So that that's a different plane between the between the prostate and the DVC here? Yes. So that there's a separation here. There's a separation. Very well seen. Yes. Right, come, come nearer. So you'll see two pillars of tissue on either side of it. It's so that you see two pillars of tissue. Let me let me buzz it off. This bloody thing bees it, man. Right, come down. You see, this is this is the corpus pongeosal tissue. This is the urethral tissue here, and there are two cylinders-like thing which come a, a, a some sort of a, a cylinder which comes all around the urethra. Keep that. That is a watershed area. I would say keep that. That is that retains a lot of muscle. Don't divide it or strip the urethra away from it. Just divide it and see that it stays around the urethra there itself. That is more important. So what I'm doing here now is I'm opening the urethra here. I don't want to dissect the urethra. I'm not interested in dissecting the urethra there. Sister scissor, uh, this uh, suction, catheter ready. 
ಎತ್ತಟ ದಚ ಇರತ್ರ ದಚ ಇರತ್ರ ಹೈ ದೇ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಟಿಶ್ಯೂ ದಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಟಿಶ್ಯೂ ಕಮ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಪ್ರಾಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಡಿಯ ಹ್ಮ್ ಐ ಗೋ ಲಿಟ್ಟಲ್ ಯಾ yes i did a mistake i thought it's erythra it's erythra but the pro- the tumor is extending beyond that area and i had to take a little more amount of erythra added to it right come up hold it and now i go from the sides where the connections are there separate it off yes little away because the right side the thing is extending much below yeah so i think i have i have violated the plane at the level of urethra the urethral margin which i thought it's clear but it was on the right side it was extending i had to revise that urethral margin which i went a little deep inside let me see whether i need to take a donut again to take care of that i don't see that necessity to push a catheter slowly push a catheter slowly yes Uh, let me see whether i need to do no i don't think that is necessary the thing what i have taken out is good enough i think that's good enough i don't think there is i can see anything there do you see anything there no are you not worried about the uh, positive margins if it is like this positive something mar- no i think the positive margin may not be there but we have violated the plane that is true that is true positive margin might not be there the edge of the resection will be will be clear but i i will definitely say that we have violated the plane that is that is one thing which is true that was extending into the urethra so in that area i opened the urethra and we saw the tumor coming out there so i had to take out a little more amount of urethra here on this side on the right side no i don't see anything here in the urethra now I possibly take a roco and then do a suturing come down suction so the problems what i face today is one is i opened a, i opened the capsule at the at the apex i opened the tumor that's number one number 2 i could not get a proper plane between the nerve and on this side i could save some nerves i don't know how far i could successfully do that these are the two problems i faced now i go ahead with a uh, anastomosis directly or i'll do at a small roco stitch and then do an anastomosis are anybody in a favor of doing one more donut to this area uh shanik is there i can ask shanik Shrenik, I don't think I need a donut to be done because it's already deep. It's already quite deep. Inside, catheter inside, catheter out, out, out. No, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Come. Two zero.
So I'm going to place a small wheel there. Uh, Malay. Yeah. As usual, excellent dissection. But I would have probably, if you would have uh, spared and not taken the DVC suture, the real advantage is you would have able to see the apical margin and your urethra completely. And probably Maybe. you could have avoided your uh, this thing. But it is fair Maybe. enough now. Yeah. No, no, maybe true, maybe true, maybe true, but it's retrospective. And, and Malli, you, you get a pretty good length of complete urethra, dissect it out all around, which you normally do. Normally, your these dissections are superb. And I, I tell you, no, I was I, really I wondering reason... why do you need why do you need robot when you are showing so beautifully? But anyway, no, that's apart. Yeah. No, what I thought is I have gone to the apex beyond, but there was a small. A projection of the of the prostate there in the apical area, which is very well seen in MRI, but I underestimated that. That's all. No, but that is why uh, Malli, you, you could have dissected urethra all around. Remember, then you there, then there was no doubt that you could have ever entered into this part. Anyway, that's fine. That's a good learning for all of us that we should be absolutely able to dissect urethra, go till urethra from the apex, and then you only put an incision. But fine, fair enough. But raise your posterior, lateral, everything was super. Yeah, That's sure. fantastic. Yeah. 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 I made a one single rope stitch with a mattress like picture, the mattress like uh, suture. But there was a projection there that was a miscalculation uh, from my side. I would have read the MRI yeah, in a better fashion. This is a uh, miscalculation from my side. Okay, that's okay. Sometimes do happen. Give yeah. me the. Can you ask someone to uh, push from the uh, perineum so you will be able to see no. the urethra? Just make sure that everything no, is no, okay. No, we don't do that. We don't do that routinely. No, no. No, no, in uh, this case, just to see your urethral margin, that they are... No, that I'll show now. If the patient is supine. Yeah. Patient is supine. Okay. That's the reason why we can't oh, show anything oh, more. Oh, okay, okay. The patient okay. is no supine problem. and That's I'll fine. not be able to do it also now. See, the thing happened is, I'll show you where I went wrong, was that area, I'll show you, that area where there is a projection of the lobe into the, uh, beyond the prostate. That area, that I agree, area, agree. That, 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 area. That's right. That, that's, so that's where that's I got right. into it. Salah. Salah, Salah, Salah. If you, my, if you yeah. why I'm asking you one to three o'clock, if you will see there, there is some tissue. So just if you can ask someone to probably push, just make sure nothing is left out at that level. That's all before your NSO is. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw that. I saw that. I'm convinced. And I saw Perfect. that twice. That's the reason why. I'm convinced that okay, there's no okay. tissue there. Perfect. I went beyond enough. it. And hey, I, I went into it initially, but I corrected myself and went beyond now. I'm sure about it now. Okay. Now, okay, going back enough. was a depressing thing for me. That's all. Nothing going into it was a depressing thing. But anyway, I corrected it. That's okay. That's the first suture. Come back. What is it? Is this one? No. Oh, that's also awesome. come. Come nearer too far. I'm taking a Van Van Thoven technique. Ali, what is this Ashtivari's hood technique? Hood technique is retaining everything. I've got a robotic hood techniques, but uh, uh, I can do it in a lab, but it's a very difficult thing. It's a complete intrafacial dissection, retaining all the structures above, uh, above as, a, as one single hood. That we do it robotically, routinely we do it in a case like this or in early cases. We do it routinely for uh, the continence rates are very good. What I do is, you see, see what you see here, all this hood will be completely intact. The, whatever endopelic fascia, as I said, intrafacial dissection, that's completely intrafacial dissection. Now I need to go back onto the urethra. Right, come down. So, that's the first bite.
Come back. Come near it. Come near it. Come near it now. Okay, that's the first thing on this side. Leave it. So that is the bite I need to take. Come nearer. Hmm. Rotate, don't rotate. Hello, suck there, suck there. Okay. Come back. Come back, man. Police are here. I oh, sorry. I took the police. Come inside. Okay, back. Okay. Come nearer, huh? Right. Come nearer. Okay. Now I think I made a four sutures, two onto the urethra, two onto the uh, onto the bladder, and now I pull both the things. I need to see that the anastomosis is quite fine. Yes. Push the catheter. Suck there in the anastomosis area. Up, up. Lift that tissue up. Lift that tissue up there and see. Get back the catheter. Okay. See there. That's the mucosa is intact. Mucosa is sutured. You saw that? Yes. Okay. Right. That's the mucosa yes. which is sutured. So this has become a trigonization of that area which is finished. So now I suture it now. So this makes us easy to put a catheter easily. Any any time. You should be able to change the catheter. You should not be in a hurry. You should not be. It should not. It should not be difficult for you to change the catheter at any time, at any point of time. That's the idea of of that. Next, Mali, there is a question from Doctor yeah. Saurav Patel. Would like to know how do you decide about bladder neck reconstruction? What are the visual cues? No, I don't think I'll do any bladder neck reconstruction. Let the bladder neck be as wide as possible. That's not a problem. And I'll make an anterior racket after the anastomosis is done. There's no need to reconstruct it beforehand. You do it at the end. That's the easiest thing to do. Because once the anastomosis is done to the trigon area, the rest of the thing can be done by an by anterior racket. I'll show you the anterior racket. This bladder neck is quite, a, quite big. Suction. Show me the edge. I'll show you how I do it now. This, uh, this is the left-sided one. OK. Okay, this one thing is over. I'll come to the top, top now. Come up, come down. Come up. Yes. That's the anterior one. Okay. So this is on the other side. Leave it now. Now this side, we are inside. Yes, we are inside. So we need to come at... Uh, Three o'clock position. So hold the needle holder in such a fashion that when you move it, it comes onto the three o'clock uh, three o'clock position. So come down, come down. What we end up in, it should be rotating. Come on, suck there, suck there at the anastomosis. Get the catheter back a little. Yes. Okay. Uh, 
Now you come into the bladder. Okay. Now I have to come to the anterior part of it. I need to take three or so, four, three sutures on either side. I don't think I need anything beyond that. Dr. Venugopal wants to know how often have you encountered vesicoerythral stenosis after radical prostatectomy? I'm not arrogant, sir. There's only one case in my probable 650 per radical prostate still now. I had only one case who had a vesicoerythral stenosis. And there is one case which was required an incision. There was one case who developed a vesicoerythral stenosis, which was not because of a, a, a stricture. It was because of a CA bladder which developed there. Krishna, patient's name. Chris, his PSI was normal. He developed a CA bladder at the anastomotic area after three years after radical prostatectomy, and he had a retention of urine. So that was our data set. So regarding the bladder neck reconstruction, Abhi, I'm talking to you now. I've come to a point where I finished it and I'm going to close this thing and then reconstruct the bladder. Come near Abhiya. Okay. Okay. I should be able to pass a catheter freely. Whenever I do it, it should be free. Now I am able to see that the catheter is coming in. I pull these two, two things sequentially now, and that closes the bladder neck. Come. See now, with the catheter going inside, take it back, push it in, going inside. Chalo, take a 20 number catheter and push it. Now, with this inside, I'll, I'll take a 20 number catheter and do it. So, that's a closure here, which is happening about the vesicoerythral anastomosis. And then I'll close this racket of uh, incision, which is there in front of me. So you leave behind a 20 French catheter? Yes. How long do you keep the catheter? 12 days. So it is going in easily. Has it gone in? Gone in? Right. So pull it when it's going in. Otherwise, what will happen is, it will, it will it will go through the uh, through the suture lines and it will be difficult scissors to me cut this ah there's a suture which stays there and now let me close this. Ah, come nearer, come nearer, come nearer. I'm not able to see. It is a suture. That's all. Take a forceps and hold it. Both, both of them. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay, now then I'm going to close it and then I'll do an anti racket. I'm near it. I'm near it. Some saline to distend the bladder sister later. 
Okay, that's a closure of it. And now I close this bladder, which is ever is open anteriorly. Somebody was asking how to close the bladder, how to refashion the bladder. Now the bladder is closed, sister. Uh, did you put the uh, saline in the bladder in the balloon? Not yet. So that's an anterior closure of the bladder neck. I think that will become quite easy to close it anteriorly. You don't need anything more than this. Not my day in opening the bladder and opening the tumor, underestimation of the pathology there. Okay. Can I suture this? Or I put a hemolock? Give me a hemolock. Okay. Okay, can I give him a hemolock? Right, scissor. The needle holder. Okay. One needle out. Other needle out. Give a suction. I think that's done now. Yeah. It's an anastomosis. There's no bleeding there. Can we get down the pneumo, please? Get down the pneumo. Do we see anything? Give me a bipolar. Okay. Bipolar. Mali, Dr. Prashant Kulkarni wants to, wants three or four important steps in this procedure which will make the surgery easier. Well, one is a posterior dissection. That's number one. That makes it easier. Number two, uh, well, on the sides of the, the now sparing part, you should know the anatomy and the layers of that at that point. That's more important. And the third thing is practicing suturing. Half of the time we spend time in suturing. So that needs to be pushed, the, pull the catheter a little, pull the catheter a little. Yes, get it? Right, that's enough. So half of the time we'll be spending in suturing. We should be ready to uh, uh, do as good suturing. That's all. I, I just leave this bladder like this and put a drain in this area and extract it after bagging the specimen. Yes, now, now flush it and see. Yes, bladder is getting distended. Okay, that's fine. There is a bleeder there. Give me a, give me a, give me a, give me a, give me a. Something is bleeding there. Okay. Fine. Pull the catheter. Okay. Okay. We'll go to the next case. Sir. Um, uh, case yeah, sir. wonderful Mr. demonstration, Mali. Thank you. Thank you. But I, it's a mistake that I've entered into the tumor. My mis my misjudgment that the tumor was projected. Uh, projection into the tumor. I'll go to the next. Sir. I think uh, 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 Vijay can uh, pre pre present the case. Yeah. Camera, 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 Bijou, camera, Bijou. Uh, presenting a 57 year old gentleman, huh? a smoker, hypertensive no, and diabetic, is a known case of recurrent stone disease, underwent bilateral PCNL. Uh, on ultrasound, on follow up, there was an incidental detected renal mass on the left side. Serum creatinine and hemoglobin were normal.
this is the ct uh, abdomen and pelvis which was done outside there was a left renal tumor of uh, 3.6 into 3.7 cm with a renal score of 8a this is the mri imaging which we performed uh, so we are planning a left lap uh, partial nephrectomy which is live from desai or thank you Dr. Malik Arjun. Yeah. Arun, Arun Chawla yeah. will be moderating. Yeah. I'll be there. Yeah. Arun Chawla will be moderating. Good. And uh, Dr. Ramesh wanted to know whether you will do a lymphadenectomy in radical prostate. We do, we do it routinely, but this guy doesn't warrant a lymphadenectomy. 5, 6 PSA, one small uh, uh, lesion, and 3 plus 4 disease. That's the reason why. You got the you got the history of the next patient? Yeah, history is presented. Yeah. Incidentally yeah. detected left renal mass. Uh, le left renal mass in the hilar area. And uh, we already placed the uh, um, uh, ports here already. Some small dissection has already been done. We your voice is attention. your voice has to be heard better. It is feeble. Mike, maybe mic positioning has to change. Okay. How about now? No, no. It's still not yet, not yet, sir. It's a little muffled. Uh, or maybe mask is there. That's why. Or one minute. They'll just check it. Send this camera there. Hello. How about now? Not yet, sir. Not very no. clear. Yeah. Now it's clear? No. The volume is quite low. It was all right on the other side. Yeah, In yeah. this theater, your voice is very feeble. How about now? Not, 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 not great. Yet. Still. Is it okay now? Yeah, that's better. A bit better. Little better. Little better, but okay, not. Okay, okay. Okay. Achha, you, you have an external picture now? We have an external picture, but can they not increase the voice? Sir, not very clear. Uh, we would like to know the port positions. Um, and a uh, question to you, keeping in view the previous history of PCNL, uh, mm -hmm. do you encounter, uh, expect some problem while mobilizing the kidney? Okay, I'll, I'll get to that point. Uh, are you able to hear me now better? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, the, the first thing is position regarding the previous PCNL. I don't think I'll give it much relevance. It's posteriorly placed. I don't think it is going to be of any problem now for me because uh, the tumor is an anterior hilar area. That's number one. Number two, regarding my uh, port positions, I all, the ports are already placed. If you give me a pen. If we... And this is a costal margin. It's a little obese patient. No, no, it's not working. And um, and this is the midline here. So we are this not clear, not clear, sir. Yet. No, the, the camera, the, the, the camera is not, right. Voice is not clear. Voice is no. clear, Mali. Camera okay, okay. showing the camera. The camera, camera. Them, okay, okay. Yeah. okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, that's better. Now it's fine. Yeah, better. So we have we have three ports at present. One is the right hand port, left hand port, and the telescopic port. I'll have one port for my assistant for suction, etc. We placed a little laterally because the patient is quite uh, obese, and possibly uh, this will be good enough. What we have done till now is uh, I possibly may may not agree with the same port because Gauss has a tendency to put the port a little ahead, and I have got a tendency to put the port a little uh, medially. So we have a clash in this most of the time. See, the port position depend upon the 
location of the tumor also or you keep it a constant? No, mostly, see, the three things which uh, decide the port position, one is your height, number two, the table height, the patient's size and where you are looking at. Majority of the times, I would wish the my angle of the angle of the instrument somewhere around 45 degrees to 50 degrees into the into the abdomen. A longer sur longer surgeon may have it a little little different, but uh, most of the time it is so. But most of the time, what is important is angle between the two ports. That's very good. That's going to be more important. That's going to be deciding how good or how easy to for you to suture or not to suture. So we are we are separating the. Uh, Right. We are separating the colon from the uh, jureta. You can see the jureta there. Colon is half mobilized and uh, we are separating it down now. Most of the time, that's a very nice plane which exists. We don't need to make any, any we don't need any much of a uh, 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 energy source to do that. Minimal small veins, you don't need much of it. In fact, a scissor also can do a good wonder. And it's a beautiful plane which always exists between the zerota and the and the uh, uh, and the mesocolon. So that we need to explore. And this patient has got a hyla tumor. So idea for me, the present idea is going to get into the uh, get into the hilum, uh, get the artery up, and then it's going to be in front of me. I don't need to do the dissection of the kidney, and it's going to be in front of me only. That's what my feeling is, expectedly so. And anterior hyla tumor, I think you got the pictures very clear. It is very just adjacent to the uh, renal vein and uh, sitting onto the renal vein. I presume I'll get a good uh, 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 plane between the renal vein and the uh, and the tumor. Most of the time, as per uh, well, my experience is very small. Most of the time, tumors don't enter into the into the sinus. They are having a new capsule. They don't enter into the sinus. It's very rare that they enter into the sinus. Finest fat infiltration is said more radiologically than uh, than what is seen. You can see a nice plane of zerota and the areolar tissue between the zerota and and the uh, uh, saw that it's a nice plane. As you go to the midline, the what happens is the the uh, zerota becomes very thin, and you will be able to you will be able to see the thinning of the zerota and uh, stretching of the zerota. Well, where is the deadline? This is the deadline. You reached uh, an inferior mesenteric vein, which is seen on the on one side of the uh, uh, one side of the uh, uh, meso colon. That is the place where you say that okay, this is the time when I think I don't need any more dissection. Otherwise, you will be ending up in going to the other side of the abdomen, which is not needed. And this is the zerota. Saw that? You see the zerota layer here. It's very clear. Saw that? Two veins. Yeah. One is inferior mesenteric on this side, and a gonadal on that side. So this is the gonadal vein on that side and inside the zerota. At this point, the zerota becomes very, very thin. You saw that the zerota becomes very, very thin. Though it separates, it, it becomes very, very thin. And you see the aorta there. And uh, what you see is going to be a uh, uh, ureter there in that area. The zerota can be easily opened here. Let it be opened and then enter into the zerota. So this is a zerota being opened at that level because I think that's enough. We reach to the point and you will be able to see the psoas muscle and lifting the gonadal axis easily there. So let me see there. And Dr. Malik, uh, there's, a request, uh, there's a request that if your voice can be a little louder. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Can you? Swami? Swami? Okay. Now, how is it? Yeah, better, better, sir. Okay, that's a gonadal gonadal vein here, and that's a gonadal uh, veins which are going to be there, and uh, we'll find a ureter also in the same pack in the in the upwards. It is going to be gonadal. Lower down, it's going to be ureter. So we have mobilized it. One minute, let me. Yes. Okay. Now you can see the ureter also there. Okay. 
So the whole gonadal and ureter. That's ureter here. You saw that. Absolutely. Yes. Right. And this axis is going to be lifted up. Once you lift it up, you'll see the psoas. Your instrument should be a good, good uh, port placement means the instrument should go directly parallel to the uh, parallel to the psoas muscle. That's a correct placement of the port. Your uh, dissection onto the pedicle on any area is going to be very, very, very easy. So if you want to have a correct placement, which the judges is visualize the psoas muscle in your body, in your mind and stay parallel to the psoas muscle. And the instrument should go directly into that area. That's how it is going to be there. By placing so, you are going to take off this lymph nodal packet along with the aorta, with the aorta. People do a mistake of going onto the aorta, lifting this lymph nodal packet towards it, which is not necessary. Our idea is not that, so you don't need it at all. And that is going to be the gonadal vein. It's a small branches up towards the lumbar, and then you stay back with this lymph nodal packet towards the towards the aorta, and that is going to be. Lifting this tissue and exposing possibly the artery shortly. Okay, but this is one window what we created. Suppose in case you do think about a uh, Sardinsky or anything. I think it's one single vessel for him, if I remember right. Sardinsky or anything in a multiple vessel scenario, you may not be using a, a, a bulldog. So in which case, what you do is open this zerota parallelly again. Strip this zerota straight up into the towards the top. See that's the zerota which is there. You identify the zerota below. You identify the uh, renal vein here, uh, gonadal vein here. The renal vein should be here somewhere. So strip the zerota here. Open the zerota. That's all. It exposes the, it exposes your uh, adrenal and the renal vein also very well. So that is going to be the gonadal vein, and I'm going to get a renal vein somewhere here. That's what I'm looking at. Okay. I think my dissection is not yet complete on this side. Yeah, Dr. Malik, question is what instruments you are using now? I'm using a, a fenestrated grasper on the left side. And a, a, it's a gyrus. This is a G400 gyrus. It's like ACM once upon a time, which is being used. I can use a Thunderbeat. I have a Thunderbeat also. I can use a Thunderbeat also. Yes. I'm going inside the zerota. I'm not going outside the zerota here. You saw that? This is inside the zerota. Zerota is open. By going inside the zerota, what I'm trying to do, I'm going to push this whole connect, uh, whole spleen towards the, towards the midline. That exposes the completely D, D. It retracts. The spleen will retract itself by its own weight. You should be able to see a greater curvature of the stomach on this side. Then only you'll say that spleen is away from you. It will be very well seen. You'll be able to see the inferior phrenic artery and a greater curvature of the stomach, both coming out here. Inferior phrenic will come here. Inferior phrenic will come here into the, uh, into the uh, adrenal and the greater curvature of the stomach has to be seen. So by which, what will happen is everything gets retracted on its own. You, the spleen doesn't come into your picture. You saw that? That's going to be the greater curvature of the stomach there. You saw that? Absolutely. Greater curvature of the stomach here and the inferior uh, phrenic artery which comes here. Right, that, that takes away the complete uh, uh, picture from a uh, spleen from us. Give me a suction. I think getting the spleen in the, with the all attachments down is the principal, uh, what you can say, rate limiting step in exposing the hilum. Yeah, that's a, that's a minimum. You better on the left side when you want to do a bigger surgery, you always see that the spleen is not in your way. That's a minimum thing what you need to look at. By coming, getting spleen inside you, it's going to be a problem. Unnecessary, you'll require one more uh, uh, port to push it, to pull it, and uh, you'll need nonsense. That was all not necessary, not warranted. Not warranted at all. You see, that's, that's what I always say. Exploit the anatomy. The spleen is there with its weight. Use the weight of the spleen to get it away from you. That's how we need to exploit. So now where are we? We have just created a window below. That's a, that's a gonadal vein there. Now we need to have a upper window and or expose a pedicle there. Upper window can be created. If I want to expose, give me a suction. Okay, if, we, if I need to expose an upper window, I need to identify the renal vein first. First, identify the renal vein. Just below it, it will be renal vein here. This should be the renal vein here. And then you'll see a adrenal vein there. Come here. I'll show that now. Hmm. 
Malli, this is a single drain artery. Uh, I think, yes. A single artery, anteriorly situated tumor close to the hilum. Sir, what are the steps you'll be following now? Sir? What is in your mind now? How you're planning your dissection now? No, I'm not planning anything yet. Because I need to see everything exposed. Then only I'll think about planning. Because uh, I'll be biased. If I plan now, I'll be biased. So this is, a, this is going to be a, the adrenal vein, I think. There. It is not the true renal vein. There should be a, a bigger renal vein coming up here. Let me, let me come here now. Let me follow it up. Yes, this is the renal vein. So that's the renal vein here. Got it? Absolutely. That's the renal vein. And this is going to be the uh, this is going to be the I have to get the renal artery now. Okay. Let us come here now. I'll get some lumbars. Take the lumbars down. You should be getting exposed with the renal artery. Okay. Again, this way. Something is holding this vein here. So take out that. That's a renal vein here. That's the lower border of the renal vein. Something is holding the vein here. So come down here. Okay. Come down. Come up. Again. Move up, move down. Move up, move down. Dissect above, dissect below. So you proceed further where it is going to be. So this is the lymph nodal mass which we don't need to take out. And majority... Okay. Again, come up. Okay. Again here. So move up, move down, move up, move down. That's the lumbar vein what you're going to get. And behind the lumbar vein will be the renal artery. Renal artery will lie just in that junction there, beyond it. Beyond that, you'll be able to see a renal artery there. There's a renal artery there. You saw that? That's the renal yep, artery yep. there. Once you've got a lumbar, you've got a renal artery immediately. I need to take care of the lumbar to get a proper renal artery control. Can I have a clip ready? Okay, clip to me. Thank you. One more. That's one more. Is that to me? So just behind it, there will be renal artery. That's a standard anatomical place. Not much of a variations which are there into it. If you have a lumbar stretching like that, you will have a renal artery coming in front of you. This is a... Right. Yeah. Clear now? Clear. Yes. Clear. Come down. Give me a... It's a very thick patient. I can see a lot of uh, stretch what I'm having it on my hand to stretch the kidney. And that is a very thick patient there. Okay. That's an artery which I'm exposed completely. Let me see whether I can get something more in between tissues can be taken out. Yes. Okay. I think my control onto the artery is adequate enough for me to have a... Okay. I can have a bulldog easily. Clear now? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Right? I can have a bulldog on it. In case on the day when you don't have to have a bulldog, the other way around is going to be creating a window here. Come down. Right. Suction. Creating a window here. Either lateral to the, either the lateral to the, uh, this is the uh, uh, adrenal, adrenal vein, vein or medial to the adrenal vein, depending upon the, your need. You can create a window here. 
is well fat both are this this what i talk about two window techniques either you create a window lateral to the adrenal vein or medial to the adrenal vein you will have a window there and you will be able to see the swas from that window got me yeah, in, in the upper in the upper window how how lateral you are from the aorta now here no this is the swas muscle there i am lateral to the aorta okay, medial okay. to the uh, medial to the uh, uh, medial to this uh, um adrenal vein mm -hmm. and i am for a radical nephrectomy this is a correct suppose you are taking out the adrenal gland also this is mm -hmm. the way you do it so this is how you create a window and enlarge that window suppose you don't want the adrenal to be involved into it what you do is you create a plane here somewhere hey fat suction you create a plane here somewhere in the medial part of the this point shift the vein here and try to create a plane and get the adrenal away from you that's another window it's for creation of a window for clamping with the satin ski that's all i'm talking about you got my point yeah that's got it point. That, that's a, that's the way you create so at present i'm not really keen on doing anything with satin ski so i don't need it so next thing what i'm going to do is i want to i want to do my dissection towards the hilum which will expose my tumor the tumor is not seen at all here the the, the things are very down and i don't know where the tumor is so unless i open this area and see where the tumor is i will not be able to see can i have an ultrasound please hopefully this is the tumor let me see with an ultrasound ultrasound swami we can see the bulge okay. of the tumor okay you are able to get the ultrasound picture also now not yet yeah we are seeing the ultrasound now okay i see some elevation here Yes, that appears to be the tumor here. You can see the ultrasound. Saw that? Yeah. That's a kidney there. No. No, that's a tumor there. There appears to be. Let me take out this fat here. The fat is. That's a pedicle there. Yeah, that's a tumor there. The tumor is here. The tumor is above. This uh, this area is the tumor. That area is the tumor. You can see that. You can see yeah, that. Can that is the area of tumor. Not this. This is only a fat here. This is the area of tumor. Ah, no, a little away. I thought this is a tumor. No, this is fat. Help her, okay. And that is a tumor there. So my tumor is located here. So let me see again. I'll let me lift up the this uh, fat away from me and expose the tumor completely. Give me a thunder beat. So how do we expose? Okay, let me let me do it in a two ways. Let me go into the on the kidney first. Too much of fat and uh, toxic fat is there. This guy. Yes, I am exposing the kidney now. Not yet. Not yet. I think you can make that PAPR. That's correct. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to bear that area completely. to have a better look i am on the surface of the kidney now so i stay there and reflect this fat away from it and i can close it at the end i use this fat to close it at the end so it will be a you, big stick but you will keep the fat over the tumor intact it's very unusual to have that sort of a picture here because there is some sticky fat you saw that already on to the kidney yeah. So that. That so, yeah, ah, you cannot separate it off. Don't try venture too many things at this sort of a juncture. This is not a correct patient to have that sort of a uh, thing. So you may end up in taking out that uh, uh, that um, uh, hold. Until uh, I'll write it. It's like a cake. I'll show you. It appears. It, it lifts like a cake now. It's going to be lifting like a cake all around. And there is some fat which is going to be sticking onto the uh, onto the onto the kidney, which I'm not going to hold at all. so i am going to lift this completely and then get expose it
but a tumor predominantly in anterior position, you're not going to mobilize the whole kidney. No, I don't think I need to mobilize the whole kidney at all. It's on the anterior surface only. So I'm going to mobilize only the surface of the kidney only. Anterior surface. I need only this fat to be lifted away from that area, exposing the kidney. That's all I need. I don't need anything beyond that. I need the vessels to be exposed because the vessels are there. This appears to be a tumor there. Let me take out a little amount of fat along. And what I see you are using, uh, you are mobilizing the gerotas as a flap, which yes. will, yeah. I'll use it for closer in case necessary over the, over the hilum. Okay. This I, I use it as a flap like thing because uh, somewhere I have to open it, right? Yeah. Absolutely. I have to open it somewhere or other. I can't be keeping it like this. I have to open it somewhere. You don't create planes in this sort of a case. Let the planes happen on its own because it's not under your control. This sort of a sticky fat behaves very badly. One of the most common reasons for a conversion to a radical is basically in presence of a sticky fat. Um, uh, the, the conversions, whatever I had in my life, are have more than half of them are because of the sticky fat, not anything else. Okay, come down now. Okay, let me take the stuff. What? We need to see. Oh, wow. Give me that trisector. Trisector. Hmm. We need to reach the hilum somehow or other. We need to reach the hilum to understand the dissection over the hilum because it is just adherent to the vein. So at one point, I need to reach the hilum at some or other. So the hilum has to be exposed. So the I need to, my dissection is going to be transhyla. You asked about my plan, how I'm going to do it. It's going to be transhyla. I'm going to do the dissection first into the hilum, nowhere else. First, I need to dissect into the hilum and then go in the rest of the areas. The rest of the areas can be reached any time, any point of time. But the thing which limits me or does something for me or difficulty, whatever I face, is only inside the hilum. The parenchyma doesn't give me a big botheration, but only the hilum gives me the biggest botheration. So let me get into the hilum, the side of the hilum which is exposing the renal vein. That is going to be the most important step for me here. Hopefully this is the vein which is coming in front of me. Yes, that is the vein which is coming in front of me. And this is the hilum which is getting exposed for me. Let me expose this as much as I can. I think it's clear, Arun? Yes, absolutely clear. We have got a yeah. window. We can see the upper border of renal vein. Ah, that's it. So I need to get into that sinus, that hyalur area, dissection into the sinus, expose the sinus, uh, that uh, hyalum completely, dissect all those areas, and then start, start creating a plane between the structures and the tumor. So that's what is needed here. Right. I'll see Can whether how much I Malay, yeah. Dr. Krish wants to know that you're alternating between Thunderbeat and ACMI. How yes. do you decide that? You see two instruments. The instrument on the, the ACMI has got dissection happening on both the arms. The two arms, see this? Both move. The Thunderbeat, only one arm moves. Correct. So whenever I need a dissection better, I look at under ACMI because it is a by, by arm dissection, which is making it easier for me. Whereas in a, in a Thunderbeat, it is going to be a uniarm dissection. It only one arm moves that way and this way. That's a, that's, a prob, that's a problem. So whenever I need a finer dissection like this, like making a, see this type of a dissection, 
this happens better with under with gyrus unfortunately this company doesn't exist any further and you don't get spares for this thing that's a pro that's a problem what we are facing now we import the spares or uh, hand instruments from some mexico china wherever the supply has been done and the stock things are pending there okay come down now so i am trying to expose the medial aspect of the sinus now so i think this is the vein which i have seen so i have come to a one point there so extend it all around so once i expose it my job half done and then i know where i have to go across dr malik yes, what I'm... we understand is you have uh, dissected the upper pole of the tumor renal wear is there in front of you and probably yes. anterior surface will lead you to the sinus yeah this is a you see this yeah. is a tumor and that's a sinus i am into the sinus yeah. now yeah i am already into the sinus i am already into the sinus so that that's a renal vein which is exposed completely i am already into the sinus i am dissecting into the sinus now i am separating yes. the renal vein and i possibly look for small branches of artery which will supply this uh, uh, this thing also suck there suck there suck there suck there and it make it a little more better to look at and then we'll be able to understand better so let us come to the other edge of the uh, um, this is a kidney here and again i am coming to the sinus edge of the sinus edge of the sinus you got what i said as sinus when i said sinus means that is typical gilbertnet plane what we think about dissecting when we do a pyelolithotomy a similar plane exists in every sinus anteriorly also between the blood vessels and the, and the kidney tissue so that is what we are trying to explore off got me and this is a renal artery branch you see that that's a renal artery branch which is going there you saw that yeah i saw that this is in front of you so we are dissecting into the sinus now this is what i do before even the clamping done don't dissect after the clamping you will not be able to see properly suction 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 clear it up clear it up let us make it a little better little better give me a thunder bit let me pull this down a little more give me a gauze piece i need a gauze piece to be capped there okay come nearer okay this here we should mobilize that much that nothing will come in your way when you want to suture or do anything so i am making myself clear to so that i don't get anything here on my way but this tissue is very bad as i expected because so much of uh, sticky fat i expected it preoperatively itself but i didn't have any other option i can't choose chalo suction there suction get me a gauze piece to sister let me a gauze piece let me let me clean a little better vision will be better i am able to see but most of the time too much of redness also is a problem okay leave it there leave it there so the tumor is going to be this i'll redo the ultrasound now let me edge the tumor there get me a thunder bit i'll let me dissect it this away and see that where exactly the tumor ends come thunder bit okay so for our benefit can you show a, a rough outline of the tumor uh, yeah i'll do that now i'll do that now you see this i just kept this uh, gauze piece into the sinus i'll show the rough outline of the tumor and do an ultrasound i'll show you give me an ultrasound show me ultrasound so this is what i am looking at as a tumor you can see the ultrasound now yeah you are able to see the tumor there we can see now we can see now yes yeah. i'll go on to the on to the kidney parenchyma now yeah that's a kidney parenchyma kidney normal kidney yeah we can see that we can appreciate that i'm the... coming on to the tumor yeah i'm coming on to the tumor now this is the angle that's there the end of the tumor that's the end of the tumor so my angle is at this moment come nearer come nearer this is the this is the angle of me see this is the point where there is no tumor, no uh, no tumor and that starts here so this is a point of concern this is a point of edge you put a doppler doppler 
okay that's it and i see onto the tumor not a very vascular tumor but it is vascular you can see i see the doppler only to see see that there is a blood vessel below either yeah, a vein or an artery that. just at the base of it you saw that just at the base yeah. of it you require you can visualize that if you have a doppler see that this is a big artery yeah. just at the base of it yeah just at the base you can see that very big vessel which is either pulsating or draining so majority of the time there is a stretching it's a well encapsulated tumor so that's the reason why that stretch of the artery will come rather than destruction of the artery so that is a that is a the, that is a uh, definition of the tumor and how far it is there i think it ends there here it ends there here yes that ends there mid of the screen mid of the probe that is ending of the tumor so that yeah we can see that got it that's it so i know where all is the tumor now i define my tumor give me a forceps i'll take out the gauze piece now how do you mark the mm. edge how do you mark the edge of your resection i have already Or defined the where it is i'll show you i'll show you i'll show you i'll show you now you see one thing let me one thing this edge is got is seen you know this this yeah. edge first is uh, this surface is already defined okay. you got me this surface is already defined by the sinus itself you got my point correct this is a sinus and this is already defined you don't need to do anything here the things are clear here you have some vessels which bleed which will get exposed this is defined edge okay the lower part let me tell you we just did an ultrasound here this is the edge which is the lower part which is the edge here this is the edge and the upper part you saw that it, it ends at this point there is a sticky fat on it i'll leave it there i don't want to do that because i start resecting from here and push it upwards so i'm not i'm not really concerned where it ends exactly there i'll be able to see it there itself so that's what i'm planning i want to i want to do a little more dissection into the sinus so that my job is a little less done once the clamping starts give me the trisector here so i i my sinus is still not had been completely dissected only upper part where the where the uh, vein is there it is dissected lower part we had some bleeding so we stop let me see what else can be there at one point it starts bleeding then you stop and don't dissect any further and go ahead with the excision of the tumor that's it i'm trying to dissect still further don't inside you, you feel you feel it's an encapsulated tumor why don't you absolutely, plan absolutely ab absolutely encapsulated tumor very well i'll show you but you will get a nice plane onto the sinus also i am telling you it's a very well encapsulated tumor you'll see a nice a nuclear resection happening i'll show you that's a encapsulation you'll see that you see that plane which comes inside the sinus i am i am right inside the sinus here there is a bleeder which has went in which is bleeding now right that's an encapsulated tumor i have done half of the dissection of the tumor attachment into the sinus the rest of the half i'll do when i start cutting i don't think i can do further let me see i can still do further i'll do do it so the lower, lower border of the sinus let me see would you like to do after clamping also some dissection or everything yeah, that automatically clamp? happens that automatically happens i am trying to decrease my clamp time because it is better to dissect the sinus when it is not clamped because you will be able to differentiate a pulsatile structures and a big vein etc distended once after clamping everything is collapsed you will not be able to judge where you are exactly what you are cutting so i try to do a dissection you see that from here till here we have already dissected it is all inside inside the sinus we have dissected it off and there is some fat in the sinus yeah would Sir? like to see the uh, would like to see the main renal artery and its branches also at this point will it yeah, be okay this is this is the, this is the artery. what you see in front of you is artery okay yeah Good. this is the artery and that is a vein and these are the branches of the artery i am not trying to dissect the branches because these branches have got no relevance to this tumor because this tumor is in the center in the sinus so it has got no relevance to the tumor so i have gone as deeper as possible i don't think i can deep further i'll see if i can go further yes i can i i think i stop here yes i can go up to that point i can stop here i stop here yes 
I stop here now. So this is the end of uh, dissection, what we have done in the sinus. Now what I have to do is continue this dissection on this area and divide it here. That's all. That's what I'm going to plan. If I look at my edge, this is going to be my edge. Let me, let me mark it. That's going to be my edge. Right. I'll just dissect it at this point. And I'll make a U here and start dissecting upwards. Got me clear? Yeah. Is it clear now? This is the hilum which is exposed completely. This is the lower, lower segment vein which is going here. And this is the renal artery branches. And this is an upper segment vein which is going. I try to dissect into this lower half of the sinus if possible. Let me see. I'm not able to get a good hold here. Okay. So far, so good. Hope it goes good. Okay. Sir. Ali, how do you identify the edges of the tumor if you don't have an ultrasound? No, oh, it's an arbitrary. When the ultrasound was not there, for it is definitely seen. You can read the CT scan. This sort of a tumor, I don't think it's a big deal. That's the reason why when you don't have an uh, ultrasound, you end up in taking out a little more parenchyma along with the tumor. When you have an ultrasound, you will take a little less and try to do an nuclear resection. Pre uh, previously, it was a wedge resection on a laparoscopy because we are not able to clearly define and we were a little scared. But now we'll do an nuclear resection, stay close, expose the, expose the capsule and try to enucleate it completely. That's what I'll do in this patient. I'll try to expose the capsule and try to enucleate because Suck, suck this, suck this. Okay. The, the, I'll give you, if I do that, my bleeding chances, everything will be very, very less if I do an nuclear resection. So uh, let me try whether I can get that uh, capsular surface of the tumor. Getting that capsular surface is easier and dissection is easier in robotic, but it's a little tough. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't happen in, uh, uh, in laparoscopy. Let me see. This is the edge of the kidney. You can see this is the edge of the kidney. Are able to notice it? Yeah. But you are still, you are, you are, you are, you are continuing to dissect without clamping now. Yeah, yeah. I am not done any clamping. I will do a clamping at a later point. I will try to do till I get a bleeding, I will start doing it. Once I get a bleeding, then I start doing a clear, nearer, 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 nearer. Now I am getting onto the kidney. I hope I'll see the capsule easily here. Huh? I've got a small vessel, I saw that. I want to see a capsule. Once I get a capsule, I'm already into the kidney. I've dissected onto the kidney and divided into the kidney. Hey, this diatomy you have? Good. So what we understand is from the lower part of the tumor, from the sinus inward, you are going towards the surface and yes, going exactly. into the yeah. No, sir. The, uh, probably, maybe, sir. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> see the see the direction of the vessel. This may be the vessel which may be seeing. Maybe I need to ligate it. I am just trying to see. Get, get a plane. If I can get, I'll do a little more dissection. You see, idea is to decrease the amount of uh, clamping time. I'm trying to trying to do a little more dissection even before I clamp. I'm trying to get the posterior dissection complete. That's a posterior dissection which I'm trying to do. And that is a kidney parenchyma which I've already divided. I want to reach the, the capsule so that I can do a proper enucleation. Come nearer. Yeah, I think I have to be a little careful but, now. But Mali, are you not risking entering the tumor? I am under vision. Not... Very, very, very under, very, very clear vision. I think I am confident on that. I am very clear on that. I think that's not a problem. I, I, I am on the edge of the tumor. I think mm -hmm. that's how we do it in a robotic also. I am trying to dissect as much as possible. That's a tumor which is there and that's a sinus which is there already. That's what I'm doing. Yes. And that's what I'm separating the tumor away. Let yeah. me. Yes.
there will be a bleeder here that gets into the thing. Okay, now we clamp it and show you, then it will be much easier for you. This is the edge of the thing, then we'll see. Come, get me an ultrasound for the last look. Ultrasound. Okay, at the place where I'm seeing now, there is no tumor. At the place I'm seeing here, there is no yeah, tumor. Yeah, we can see the normal parenchyma. We right. Can see that. I come yeah. here a little, then the tumor starts. Yeah, yeah, okay. Right. This, so this, this is the, the tumor margin. start. Now the tumor starts. So yeah. I'm in this area is quite safe. So let mm -hmm. me go into this area where I've, I'll extend this incision into this area. I think I'm, I'm going to be safe in this. So now we'll get into the... No, I need a uh, clamping of the artery. Bulldog, lift it up. Okay, lift. No. Lift. <clears throat> Mali, uh, Dr. Suresh Bhagat wants to you to tell more about the bulldog clamp details. Oh, okay. I'll do it after this. Let me finish this off. <laughs> okay. <That's it>. okay. <laughs> so now, now, now I'm not putting anything to the artery. So I'm going to, I'm going to divide now onto the parenchyma. I think you can see the parenchyma very well here. I think yeah, you are able to see the parenchyma very well. Right. I'm yes, going yes. slow. Don't bother about my ischemia time. Even if it is uh, five minutes more, I'll be happy if I can give a good result. Other side kidney is normal. Young fellow. Right. I don't think I'm there in the, in the inside the parenchyma, inside the tumor. Keshav, yeah, you are uh, sure? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, right. we can see some plane also, we can see some. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you an enucleation plane there later. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm, I'm just separating the kidney parenchyma. I may see this is the vessel, what uh, Sir said, is absolutely true. This is the vessel which is there running below it. When, when we saw that, it was running here. Give me a small clip, sister. Fire mm -hmm. to me. There is a small bleeder which went into the tumor there. You can see the other side is yeah. under my the other side is under my hand. Mm. Yes, you see that? Other side we is in my, under my hand. Yes. So now why I said what was the actual plane, I get it through this. You saw this is the capsular plane. Actually, mm. ah, now I'll get a renucleation plane. You saw that? This is we what see, yeah. guided, guided me to this level. Yeah. Yeah. You see, I don't need to get into the parenchyma. This guides me to get that area. Mm -hmm. This area guides me to get into that area. Sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is a vein here, possibly, or a papilla here, either of the two. Okay, let me, let me, let me divide this off. So let me not make progress if it is not clear. Make an incision, go down and see. That's a papilla. That's a papilla there. That's a papilla there, not a, right, it's a papilla. So again, come back down. It's a small calyx which has got opened. Yeah. It's a small calyx which got there. There's a stone there, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> There's a small stone there. Uh -huh. I didn't realize that. Then I thought it's there in a different calyx. Come on. Middle end. That's a small stone. Not a small stone also, dear. Mm. Where should I keep it? Keep it there. Sagdar, 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 Sagdar. Okay. I'll keep it there. Right, fine. Come down. Suction, scissor. Scissor, scissor, scissor. I thought it's in a different calyx. Okay, done now. Now you see, there's one more stone. Oh, 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 oh. Small stone is there. Okay. You see that this is a sinus fat. This, what you see as a yellowish thing is a sinus fat. Isn't it? And this is the vessel yeah. what we saw on what we saw on ultrasound is a vessel, a vein running below the below it. Anyway, I'm taking that vein off and we are going to clip this point. This is a point which will have some vessel possibly coming into it. Give me a 5 mm. 
Give me a fireman. Right. Give me a fireman there. Yes. Caesar. Right. That's a vessel there. Yes. Now I got an edge on either side. The inferior inferior part is completely clear, uh, and the base is completely clear. I don't see any big veins coming or artery. This is the only artery which was getting into it. I clipped it off, and now I need to get into the superior and the upper part of it. I don't need to stay very far away because I know where the tumor is ending there. So let me stay a little nearer. Once I am exposing these two things, lower and inferior, the rest of the things, give me a clip, give me a clip, the rest so of the this, things this, become easier. This is the nuclear resection. This is a nuclear resection, of course, a nuclear resection. If I have a hyla tumor, there's nothing like resection. It is always a nuclear resection because this surface, which is exposed to the sinus, is never excised. They're mm -hmm. never excisable. It is completely free. That's the reason why it is a nuclear resection. It's always a nuclear resection. So that is a tumor, that is a tumor which is there, seen there. Okay. Okay, I'm on the surface. That's it. I think I got a enucleation plane there. Very well. Right. Right. Okay. Now I come to this aspect. Let there be a. Let there be here. Let me on to the superior aspect. Come nearer. Most of the time there should be a vessel from the superior aspect. Let me see whether it is there or not. Okay. I should get a vessel here because superiorly, usually they have a vessel. Get me a fireman. Superiorly, they should have a vessel. Get me a fireman. Right. Okay. Sister, closure three zero. This is a kidney parenchyma again, normal kidney parenchyma. Yes. Okay. Again, here we are in a resection mode. Right. Come down here. Right, take it down. One minute. Body flap induce. See the margin. Okay. okay, got it. I think yeah. I'm through. Yeah. I'm through. I don't think I've entered the tumor any place. I have some areas of a nuclear resection. I have some areas. I'll leave it there. You saw that? Let me see. Let me show you. I always inspect the place inside. Right. I have some areas of enucleation. I have some areas of nuclear resection. And I have some areas of resection. Saw that? The tumor. Yes. The, sorry. I'll hold it. Hold it. Hold it. It's too. Okay. See me? Show we me we do see some parent came on the margin of the tumor. See, this is a tumor here with, with hardly anything. This is where it is exposed to the sinus. And this is the area where it is attached to the kidney. Yeah. You see some area with the kidney, and this is the area which is exposed to the sinus. I leave it. I don't leave. Ah, it's there. There only suction. Three zero vicryl, please. I think I've done fairly. There's a question. There's a question yeah, that yeah. what would you do if you accidentally cut into the tumor? Oh well, I revise the margin like what I did in the last case. Or see, would you convert like... and you would you convert it to a radical? No, I don't think so. If I can get a proper margin. I don't think I'll convert into radical. I should get a proper margin. There is a there is a difference. You see, 
compromise in resection should not be there. If I get a good margin, I can do it. So how do you plan? You will plan inner inner FE and uh, unclamp or you will... There is nothing like inner inner FE for this uh, tumors. There is yeah. nothing like inner inner FE for this tumors. It is only because there is nothing uh, there to suture there. What all mm -hmm. we do is I'll, I'll suture the medulla with some interrupted sutures where there mm -hmm. are some vessels and uh, interrupted and make try to close the uh, cortex if possible, if possible. Mm -hmm. Uh, would you like to take some biopsy from the sinus fat, which which was no, over like no, this? Not, not needed, not needed, not oh. needed, okay. not needed. That is that is overestimation. We we always presume that the sinus fat will be invaded. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. But do you still feel that uh, this all these kidney changes are because of the stone disease and the previous PCNL or? No, this sign, this toxic fat is a very common event, which I saw it preoperatively itself. When I did a CT, I saw a lot of fat around the kidney and the Mayo probability index is very high in this case. But I, I was a little confident because I'm looking at an anterior tumor. I'm not looking mm -hmm. at a posterior hella tumor in this case. So that I, what all I need to dissect is very little so that I can take it away. That made me confident. Not Otherwise, the amount of... Uh, amount of uh, uh, this thing, what was there, uh, fat which was there, it was significantly high. It was significantly high. What there? Sir, is there kuch hai? I don't think I need to do anything beyond this. Okay, Calyx, I have to close. The place where you it came off now, I think it will require suture. What? Where your stitch could not stay there, I think there ah. is some losing there. You will require a stitch there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do it in a second layer, right? I'll manage it in the second layer. Because it is in the cortex, it's not in the main sinus area, it's in the cortex. I will manage it with the uh, cortical suture. Would you like to so, keep uh, the uh, uterine catheter for some time? And this no, I don't keep any uterine catheters at all. Okay. Not needed. So. No, no DJ stenting because you opened the pieces. That's a question. No, I don't do DJ stenting. If I do a DJ stenting, I keep the catheter for a week, take out both DJ stenting and a catheter at the same point of time. Never put a DJ stent and leave the patient away. They come back mostly with, if you have violated the calyx very efficiently, they come back with a urine leak at one point of time. What is your experience in of partial nephrectomies in patients with Conic pyelonephritic changes. No, well, until basically it depends upon smaller kidneys, partial nephrectomies. I it's a it's a you see, yesterday only I did a one, I kept a case for probably today, and fortunately I, I planned for a transmission yesterday, and it was a CKD patient with a large tumor. They got an MR, everything done, everybody said tumor. Everybody said tumor. Everybody said tumor. And I explored yesterday and you have been watching for a trial, you realize that it was not a tumor. Yeah. I, did, I did an ultrasound, and it was not a tumor at all. I took a, a true cut biopsy of the thing, frozen, and sent it for frozen, and they said there is no tumor. It was a pseudo tumor. So majority of the times, we should be very careful when you do those cases, especially in the CKD kidneys. I don't think I need anything further, sister. I clipped many. I don't think I can see anything. See, somewhere there was a vein here. Somewhere here, there was a vein, yes. That was a vein there. Yes, yes. Give me one. Give me one. There is one vein. See, they, there are two questions, Mali. One is, when you close the parenchyma, will the clips be inside? And yes. is there any risk of hemolytic migration later into the PCS? There is always a theoretical risk. I had one patient who had a seminal vesicle cyst, who, which I excised, and that fellow passed hemolytic clips, which I placed uh, through the urethra. That is the only case I've seen. But in the last, I don't think my, in the last numbers, possibly in the last 15, 20 years of my personal nephrectomies, I never saw a patient coming, passing the hemolog till now, 
possibly I may see in future. I can't say that I never saw. It's only a matter of time before I can see. But it appears that it doesn't appear to be a problem regarding leaving the hemolog clips in this area because it doesn't really make a big difference. Uh, what I do is I'll put some fat into it. That will clear that uh, the hemolog clips will get fixed into that fat and they don't migrate. What happens is if you don't keep anything there, they tend to get migrate. If you have a fat interface for it, they don't migrate. Cut it off. So what I'll do is I'll take it out. Sister, give me a uh, villa. And now I want a fat pad. Fat pad, fat pad, which fat pad I'll take? Which the hemolog pad? migration is not reported, but the lab tie, which earlier used to be used, there's uh, reports of migrating oh, into this the... Is too high. Yeah. This is too much. Okay, we need a fat pad. Which one should I take? Okay, give me a thunder beat. Thunder beat, please. You can't use the flap which you raised above. No, I, I need to close that. I need to keep a flap inside and close it. It becomes cumbersome. I need a flap from other side so that I can push it here and close it. So that's the reason why I'm looking at a flat pad. So... They want you to tell about the bulldog clamp details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I use a scan line bu bu bulldogs, scan line, but I don't tell. I see. Let me tell you very clearly. I'm not very happy with any of the bulldogs. All are same. They have their own disadvantages. We should be more careful. Uh, we cannot judge their capability to clamp, and we can't judge their. Uh, you see, many a time people put two bulldogs. I don't know why. But I never, I thought necessity of putting a two bulldogs in any patient. So uh, I don't do that. Give me, give me a stitch. I don't do that. So hopefully I should be able to close the, close the parenchyma together because the excision area is not much. Let me see how much thickness I can get it. I'm seeing it in a different direction. So let me take this off first. Can this step be avoided just by using can, a flow seal can, or otherwise? You can. you can, you can, you can, you can just leave it open. But somehow I'm not confident in doing that. I'll be always happy. Never take this bike too deep. It should be coming out of the medulla only. It should not go beyond that. That is one thing which is very essential. People tend to take it deep You'll endure the, because all the vessels are going to be there only. It's going to be difficult. Now I need to take a bite on that side. Okay. Which suture you are using? Is a wheel lock or? Yeah, it's a wheel lock. Lift up the loop. Lift up the loop. Lift up the loop. Okay. I'm going to push it from the other side. No, no, other side, other side, other side. Lift up the loop. Okay, now push it. No, oh. right. Okay. Okay. Give me a clip. I'm not going a very tight suturing to approximate it. It is only to give some amount of pressure rather than anything more. Right. Next. Ready? Bori ready? Position? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a vein there. Yes, sir, that's what I'm leaving. That's it. That was a vein which we saw as a base of the thing.
Oh non. Oh oh. So that in the fact. Yeah. Is it? Huh? No. Oh, come on here. We need a better bite. Okay. Can you let us know about the needle holder also, which you're using? Needle holder is only Olympus, sir. It's a Olympus usual traditional needle holder. Nothing special in it. I use a, I don't use a, I need a, I, I, I use a needle holder with a big grip. And my, my, my whole of my surgery is on palmar grip rather than finger grip. So I need a needle holder, which is of a bigger grip. Sure. Sure. I don't take it right up to the hilum. I'll take one more bite and leave it off because yeah. hilum should not be compromised by taking too much of uh, sutures there at the hilum. You may have a compromise of the uh, vasculature there. So I don't go deep into the hilum. I kept the fat there. Let me see where I stand here. Just take the thing here. Can you show us the vein in the artery again? Yes, to yes, understand yes. the depth. Yeah. This, this is the artery. This is the vein which was I saw. And that's yeah. the last bite which I take, leaving the vein off. That's it. Leaving the vein off. Okay. And the same thing on this side. Oh, sorry. Fat is gone. Okay. Take the last bite. Right. Okay. Okay, go away, go around, go around. Get her ready with my... Okay. Mali, when you take sutures like this, there is some amount of tissue which will be devitalized. Yes, definitely. I don't care. I don't see. What I, I could, what devitalization, what I have, and the result, what I get, I'm not bothered. It's okay. I can I can I can get away with that small amount small amount of uh, devitalized tissue, but more important for me is a good uh, hemostasis. So leave me alone. Uh, no, leave, leave this alone and just get the get the uh, suction there. Suction. Suction. Mm. I'm going to take out the bulldog. I'll show you the bulldog uh, applicator which I have. Okay, I'm taking it out. What is this nonsense? Yeah, the bulldog has come back. So it's a scan line applicator. Are you getting the outside view? We are no, getting, we are yeah. So any yeah. outside view? Yeah, yeah, we are getting now. Yeah, this is a scan line applicator which goes in to a 10 mm port, that's it. So it has got grooves here into which these two notches will come. So there is a little bleeding, I'll wait for some time, I think it should be all right. So there are other ways also, give me a forceps. Give me a gauze piece for some time. Let me wait, I don't think I need to do anything here. I'll just wait for some time. We are not seeing the inside view. Yeah. All right, inside view, please. Yeah, got it. I'll just put, because this is a exposed area. I see there are multiple vessels which should have been there. There are two vessels which identified for the 
uh, uh, for the for the tumor which I already clipped. And the rest of the results, if I if you look back my uh, base of the tumor, there were not many. I have not opened up any vein or any artery, uh, any vein which never bled on the on the table. So I don't think it should be a problem. I'll just wait for a moment. It should settle. I'm giving some time for it to settle. Mali, who is the supplier for this bulldog clamps? Scanline is a company. Scanline is a company. But who supplies in India? I think I think there are many fellows. I think there are Indianized uh, uh, bulldog fellows. Uh, every 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 instrument manufacturer is uh, is making a Indianized uh, bulldogs also. No, they, there there is a, a dis distributor there in Bangalore also, and uh, they supply the vascular access instruments and this uh, loop, uh, bulldogs. Hmm. No, there are there are many. I think there is one more, which is another company, which I don't know the name, but it is uh, Escalap has got a good uh, bulldog, very expensive. Scanlan has got one. I just need to wait for a moment because this area I can't do too many sutures nor do too many ventures here. I just need to wait. Give me a bag. This I'll close it later. Suction there above. Give me a bag. This will not be adequate. Sir, for them. So Indianized bags. Okay. Yes, yeah, stone be here. Come nearer. Stone. Come back. Uh, Dr. Malik, uh, supposing this yeah. stone would have been, uh, say, a year or two years after this partial, is around two centimeters, then what would have been the option from your end? PCML. Okay. PCML. Okay. So, no, see, basically, because... I don't think, you see, there are so many patients where I had tumors and and stones. Some patients I did just a stenting and did an RARS later. I uh, just a stenting and a PCML later. Uh, the only thing is I never did a stone surgery first and then did a, a uh, nephrectomy later. Give me, give me a, the, the, this thing. Uh, come nearer. Suction. So the gospel is. I just need to wait. I think this should settle. Just wait for a few moments. Give me a give me a surgical cell, large sheet ready. Sir, your opinion. You've been silent, sir. Oh, man, man, Bandari sir is silent. I need to ask him at all. Dr. Malik, question is there that V log suture size yeah. and length. Which you kept it. What is two zero or one zero? This is one zero for uh, the, uh, for uh, uh, for uh, renography, and I use a three zero if I do a inner renography. Okay, and what length you kept, sir? Uh, that will be twenty five centimeter. We'll cut it off. Thirty centimeter. Okay. We'll cut it off to twenty four, or in that case, which will be taking it down. You may turn this thing. Malay, you don't use flow seal. I don't. I used to once upon a time, but now, no. Okay. Sajisal. Okay, I left that, uh, this thing there. Keep this Sajisal there for its benefit, whatever it is. Okay, give me a needle holder. Needle hold on. 
So what I use it, I use the same suture for putting that fat across onto that area. Right. Okay, that is the place. So let me take this off. Hold it, right. Come there, come there, come there, come there, come there, other way, other place. Mm -hmm. Sort of. Better I would have done in a different direction. That other suture is there. Where is suture? Pilak. Pilak suture. Clip darling, eh? Dela. Scissor, middle hold down. Let me clip one more. I'll just clip it one. Clip it one. Yeah, we lock. I'll just suction. I can leave it also like that, right? Hmm? Where is? All right. And there. Okay. Come nearer. Oh, it's too long. Too long. I'm just suturing this thing on it as a cover for it. Good cover for the area of suture. How much was the clamping time, Dr. Mali? I don't know. How much? 20 minutes. Oh, very good. What I realized is if you plan according to and everything plan works out according to your plan, you are mostly safe. When it doesn't work out, you are already knowing it. It's a zero term. Okay. Flip to me. Eh? 
Okay. Let, that's fine. I think that's the scissors to me. Cut scissor. No, 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 no. Okay, one more piece, one more piece, one more piece. Scissor, 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 scissor. Let's go cut on it. Cut this. Right. Right, sir. I think that's it. We'll put a drain and then come out, sir. Any questions on this? Yeah, there are a few questions in the chat box. If sure, go ahead, sir. Yeah, so the question is, uh, uh, do you send the perinephric fat or the rotas fat for biopsy at the no. end? Nothing. Okay. The same thing, what is taken out will be sent. Okay, supposing you are not able to suture the both the ends of uh, parenchyma together, then what do you I'll do? I'll leave it. I'm not, I'm not got together, right? I got some fat in between and I left it across like that. Okay. Uh, another question is, uh, do you keep the uterine catheter to identify opening of calyx or some no. chain of beta in or methylene? Nothing, tube? nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay. Uh, and mass clamping of artery and vein, its indications? No, they see if you have a, if you have a single artery and a good vessel and a good uh, bulldog, you can do a, a clamping on the bulldog. But if you have a, uh, if you have a wider uh, pedicle with multiple vessels, uh, you can do, make two windows and, uh, uh, and just do an in, in mass clamping that both can be possible. Okay. The question asks is how do you make this Indian that entrapment back bag? Which, which one? The bag to get the lab bag out. is nothing. Lab, lab bag is nothing but a routine uh, drains uh, drain cover. If you the Ramson drain you have, there is a cover on it. So that you yeah. use that cover, fold the tip, fold the tip of the uh, cover and suture one uh, uh, pursing suture all around. That's all, nothing more. Yeah. So this pursing is uh, silk or proline? You put yeah, yeah, silk. Silk proline will slip off, right? It opens up. It should be a braided one. So the question is, if margin come positive on histopathology, any change in the plan? It will not come, sir. This guy will not have a margin positivity, 100%. Because it's yeah, completely was... encapsulated, very well encapsulated. Okay. So this drain is which you have kept, you will remain, uh, remove after how much? Uh, how many days? For 24, 24 hours. Okay. okay. Mostly drains don't really work. It is only because of the, because of the calicial opening I kept it. For a for a blood, it doesn't matter if it really bleeds. Drains don't work, and it just drains off. Uh, Dr. Malik, another thing you have, uh, I think, one wet clip and uh, this braided suture. So, when will be your first imaging uh, uh, in the follow-up con contrast imaging? No, most of the time we do a um, contrast and CT at the end of a year or a year and a half, and ultrasound at the end of three months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was all from the chat box. Excellent job. Uh, Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll present the next case. And uh, meanwhile, we'll start the body flap. Vijay? Vijay, can you present the third case? Coming to the Vijay? third case. Uh, she's a 62-year-old six, lady, diabetic. And uh, she had a right flank pain and was diagnosed to have right midriatric calculus with hydronephrosis. She underwent URSL and DJS outside. After this, she still had persistent pain after stent removal. So again, a CT scan was done. We showed right perinephric collection with persistent hydronephrosis and narrowing of the mid ureter. She underwent right PCN here after coming here. And an anti-grade and a retrograde contrast study was done. So these are the images shows a mid ureteric structure with good blood capacity. <clears throat> she is planned for lap right boari flap ureteric limb plant, live from Gauru. Uh, she has undergone a ureteroscopy for the stone. URSL right side. 
earlier yeah. so, so was it with laser or it was with ballistic and any details no. what was the size of the stone so the size of the stone was 10 mm as per the ot notes and uh, no energy source was mentioned probably ballistic little trip say Do you have any imaging uh, before this PCN was put? Any contrast imaging? Yeah, this is the image, sir. Before oh, we put excellent. the PCN. Excellent. This was after the URSL. We showed a oh. perinephric collection plus a dilation of the upper end of mediator. Thank you. Uh, Hello. Malik, the plan for the yeah. placement. Yeah. Okay. Can you make the table straight? See what is happening. We are going to have a right-handed uh, 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 ureteric obstruction, right-sided ureteric obstruction. We are going to operate on the right side. So the patient has been tilted a little. Let let me let me keep it flat, 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 flat. Okay, these are flat. These are distended abdomen. You can see a, a, a telescopic port which is higher than umbilicus towards the left side, so that you know triangulation is easier. But it doesn't come onto my right hand. If you keep it onto your this place, it may come onto my right hand. My right hand again goes towards the midline on the on the right side. It will not go laterally. It goes towards the midline here, somewhere at the level of umbilicus, or uh, at the level of umbilicus, or a little lower than that. Give me a five. five. Then my assistant pointed. Five here. What is the marking for the right lateral port which you have put? There's no marking. I'm just having an estimate of where I'm going to do it. See, this is my point of interest. Yeah. And this is the point, and this is the bladder. This is going to be my point of interest, and I need to have two arms going into those points of interest. Mm -hmm. That's all. That is the only idea. Nothing more. Nothing more. And rest all can be manageable. Rest all can be rest. You can five all the ten all the. Okay, take a ten and give me a five more. Give me a five. Ten, ten there. I'll have two five minute ports for myself and one ten minute port for my assistant. That goes is assisting. You can see four hands at work. Aaron. Okay. Move. Move. Two more. Huh? Okay. Right. And then move. Two more. Four steps and move. Okay. Four steps. Bye, Paula. Table down. Table down. Four six two. Come here, where is our urator? Where is our urator? This is the dilated urator. I don't need to look into anywhere else. The urator is already seen here, mm -hmm. right? That's going to be the ovarian. Okay. So the first urus, sir. Is uh, this is a stick chain which has happened completely fibrotic, and this is the dilated ureter. Mm -hmm, can see. Can you give me one more port? Five. Post URS, you presented with a big urine and a uh, retrograde. Uh, Gopal, show me the show the retrograde. It is obstruction around four centimeters away from it. There is a gap of four centimeters, sir. Two, 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 four steps. Shanta, hold it. Okay, that's going to be the urethra here. 
So the plan now is going to be hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, can you let us know your plan now? You have. Uh, we are seeing the ureter. We are seeing the bladder which is collapsed. And what will yeah, be the plan? Now? You see, this is the structure area at the level of SI joint. This is a normal ureter. I can't get this to the bladder, so bladder will come here. I'll take a body flap and anastomose to this. That's all. Nothing else. This is the peritoneum which I'm going to open. And I'll see the ureter there directly in front of me. I don't need too much of the section of the ureter. I need ureter only to be anastomosed. I'm not going to use ureter for my length, length or anything like that. So the length can be manageable by... Right? Yes, length is going to be managed by the bladder, not by the ureter. So I just mobilize it, encircle it so that I can I can do an anastomosis. That's all. Lift it up. Lift it up. Okay. Okay. I need to hold it. I can't escape. Ah. It's too big here. Yeah. Very thick also. Okay, so that's all I need to do. I don't need to do anything beyond. I possibly divide the ureter later. I don't want to go into the fibrotic area. This is a periuretic capsulation of the fibrosis in the Valdez fascia into which the ureter will peristalize. So I can divide my ureter here, which is collapsed. So I need a bladder flap right up to this point. So to create a bladder flap, we always measure the bladder capacity all the time. We always measure the bladder capacity all the time. She had a bladder capacity of 500 ml few days ago. We do a bladder distinction program specifically for this. And uh, we, got, we got a capacity of 600 to 700 ml, which is good enough to create a long flap right up to the, uh, right up to the pelvis. For all practical purposes, we haven't done any Ileal replacements still now. All the all the upper ureteric uh, 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 reconstructions we are done only by bladder, and we got bladder right up to the pelvis also. So that's not a problem. Unless the bladder is bad, we don't need that sort of a procedure. Anyway, the ureter is here, and that is going to be divided here. That's fine. We are done with it. So now the bladder. Distend the bladder. You have. Mali, how do you decide the distal extent of the narrowing now? Now the between the normal extent and the disease segment, how did you decide laparoscopically? Are you not, if you are arbitrarily no. showing no, yeah, that, that. normal? I, I can see this hard, hard structure here, which is uncollapsible. It's a very hard structure here. And it's a very, we can apply this structure here. Okay. This is the area where it is okay. And number two, this is the sacral promontory. You identify this is the sacral promontory here. This is S1, this is a sacral promontory. At this level, according to the radiologically, the ureter is normal. So okay. this is a sacral promontory and this is the ureter. That's all. So radiologically, it is there. Now I'm going to distend the bladder, please. We have a 20 French catheter inside the bladder with an infant feeding tube also to distend the bladder. We have a semi-distension of the bladder which happens till that time. So that's what is going to happen now. Right. So the same principles like what I said last time, the same principles today. So I'm dissecting the bladder away. That's a uracus there. And this is the median umbilical ligament on the other side.
this peritoneal flap you will be using later to cover your body flap. No, this, no uh, not necessarily. This all goes backwards. You see, this area is going to be posterior now. Once I pick a body flap, we raise a body flap, everything this goes posterior completely. This becomes posterior. This becomes posterior completely. Okay. So more important is not the dissection on ipsilateral side, contralateral side is more important. Majority of the time we should be not be looking into the ipsilateral shallow. This distinction stops. Stop. It is a semi-distended bladder, not a fully distended bladder is the answer. We don't want a fully distended thinned out bladder. We wanted a semi-distended bladder happening. So we do a 30 degree down till now. And now we are doing the dissection on the other side, which is more important because the kidney, the anyway, it's not a very Small bladder, it's a very big bladder, so you'll be able to get a flap without any problem. So even the dome, what is already a distended dome itself is adequate to get you as big a body flap as possible. It goes right up to the, you can write right, right up to the pelvis also. But anyway, get into, mobilize the bladder so that you are fine, you are doing a good job. Right. So this is, again, I'm talking about, this is the radius fascia. So that this is the radius space. You're going into the radius space. Now you'll get the bone here. That's it. So the, these two are in continuous. They're not in, in, in continuity. They're separate spaces between the radius and the space behind the abdominal musculature. Both are independent. Right. I think I've gone into the radius. So I get it Come here. I get a little amount of mobilization in the uh, lateral aspect on the opposite side. Not on the same side, but opposite side. That's it. This you are doing because yeah. the apex of the body flap will be somewhere there. No, I think you see that the length of the flap is going to be very small. The bladder itself is coming right up to this place. I don't yes. need any big, big area. It's going to be very small. The thing is going to be here only. I don't need a very long flap. What all I need is a very small, smiley flap which directly comes. I don't think I need a big flap onto this. I just need a small, smiley flap like this, not a flap of that nature. I'll show you a separate, a different sort of a body flap today, a smiley flap of this nature, which comes and directly attaches to the uh, ureter here. It is very small. The bladder is not fully distended also. I can, in fact, decrease the distension to a certain extent. Let me divide the, divide the ureter now. But Mali, you you yeah. you fly. I see the bladder coming up to the ureter almost to the normal yes. ureter. So yes. why don't you do a um, soas hitch itself and then reimplant that bladder? I don't think I can do a reimplantation. What all is going to happen is going to be a a a, 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 a vesico ureterostomy. That's all because it's a very thick walled uh, ureter. A proper anti reflex reimplantation is forget about it. It's going no, to be no, an anastomosis. It's that's not all. necessary to do an anti-reflex procedure. You just drop in the ureter to the bladder. That's all. That's, that's what I'm going to do, but in a different style. I'll tell you, the, to a certain extent of an anti-reflex mechanism, that's what I'm going to demonstrate. I'm not doing a true body flap. I'm not doing a true body flap. Sister, I need a scissor. I'm not doing a true body flap. I'll show you how what I'm going to do. This is a different uh, technique. Maps it from that side. That's it. That's a ureter which is there. Yes, sir. So good vascularity is there. Good vascularity. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a this is a good ureter. 
to anastomose. So I'll, I'll show you how. Can you decrease the uh, bladder capacity still? Toda kolo. Nahi really. Drain, drain karo. Drain karo. See, uh, we don't need a big borea flap like this, which is to be measured now. What all I need is a little smile. A smiley flap like this, and that will come. Okay, leave it. Hey, chalo. Band karo. A smiley flap. I'll show you where the smile looks wrong. This is the edge. And always, whenever you do a body flap, it's better come to the midline. People tend to make a body flap like this on one side. Don't do that. The midline should be involved into it because when you lift the, when you when you start suturing, the whole thing, this point will go to that area. If you take a flap from here, it will go more lateral. So it should be at the, from the midline, then to the flap. Flap can be designed as one edge should be midline. So this is a small smiley flap which I'll create. And that's enough to create, make an anastomosis between the bladder and the if you if you need a little longer, Boris. Uh... Would you like to dissect the bladder posteriorly also, posteriorly or this Posterior, much? Dissection. It, it Posterior is dissection is not going to help us at all. Mm -hmm. Posterior dissection is not going to help us. Lateral dissection, anterior dissection is going to help because posterior is a fixed structure. You may pull the bladder, that's all. You will not get a length of the bladder. You will pull the bladder. Okay, what I did is open the bladder, I'll show you the smiley. Don't suck away the bladder. Keep that some bladder into water into the bladder. It avoids the uh, injury to the posterior wall. Suction Suction inside a little. Okay. So after opening, you, you will adjust the, the base of the body flap. No, base is already distended. You will tailor it according to the need. No, base is already distended. It's quite wide. I have not okay. created in a double incision. I created only a single incision. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So I've created only a single incision. It's a smiley. It's a smiley incision. This will come here, mm -hmm. and we close it vertically. Yeah. That's all. This is, this is a very capacious bladder. Very yeah. capacious. 700 is good capacity. Yeah. Good capacity. That's exactly what I'm saying. So, a single incision body flap, you don't need to make a double incision like that. The smiley incision, this will become a tube which gets anastomosed and the small tube will be there. That's, a, that's it. You don't need another incision. Uh, and then well, push it, the blandy. Yes, sir. Yes. Suja? Three zero. Four zero is today. Classical body was not needed, sir, for this, actually speaking. So you will create the posterior plate of an astomosis first and then you will tubalize. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. What That's suture fine. is this and what is the size of suture? 3030 Vicryl. Mm -hmm. For interrupted suture of the 
flap to the bladder, to the ureter. That's a flap. Okay. Okay. Table down. Still. Table down a little. Thank you. Oh, cross in there. So I thought it is. Okay. Take a seat down. Very, very easily it has come, sir. Excellent. Right? Right. Use the use the as much necessity as possible to the wide ureter and rest all can be sutured into a tube. There's a question of whether you want to spatulate the ureter. I think the ureter is quite diameter is quite okay. Quite you okay. Don't I don't think yeah. No, if I need to spatulate the question relevance, I'll tell you. If I need to spatulate. I spatulate on the other side, posteriorly, not anteriorly. Mm -hmm. Posterior spatulation is necessary in the ureter so that the flap goes and sits into it. Don't do it anteriorly. Scissor. Cut. Another. Good. What? What is that? Sucha. What is your what is your assessment of bladder wall thickness? It's looking okay or a little thick wall? Oh, it's okay. In fact, they, I expected it much thinner than this. It is quite looking yeah. okay. It's looking okay. Our Euroflow is all right. Normal. Her bladder capacity was only four fifty ml when she presented. We past two days we did a bladder distension program. Most of these cases we do a bladder distension, sister distension program, and we could achieve 700 ml yesterday. We'll have to there's a question, reason. Mali. There's a question in younger yeah. female patient still in reproductive age group. Any consideration of future pregnancies in planning for this? Can it be done after creating a kind of tunnel in the broad ligament or so? I don't think this sort of a ureter. You see, my 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 concepts are very very clear. If I really need to make a real anti reflex anastomosis, I need a long good length of ureter. A compromised length of ureter cannot give rise to a good anti-reflex anastomosis. In children, I tell you, any, they, I've got a child who's being operated for the next week, a seven, eight-year-old child, high-grade reflex, recurrent infections being operated. I, even though they ask me for a laparoscopic, I, I refuse to do a laparoscopy in those cases because I tell them I cannot assure you 100% anti-reflex anastomosis any chance. So I would always prefer to do a transvesical, nice, having a good, a good uh, tunnel, which is much easier to do it in an open surgical technique. In a transvesical also, I can do it off. So I tend to avoid, very rarely in adult with a long length ureter, like a congenital mega ureter, where the lower ureter is absolutely normal, I may think about an anti-reflex anastomosis in, a, in an adult. Because whatever is said and done, irrespective of it, unless 
the length of the ureter is adequate i cannot do a good tapering and a good anti reflex anastomosis i don't uh, i don't uh, i don't agree that it is every time it is possible majority of the times they are never checked whether their reflex is still persisting or not and if they are asymptomatic we don't bother that they are they are having any we presume that everything has settled but my feeling i am very very clear in that if i need to do a good anti reflex i prefer open in a very small child if i need to do it in an adult i need to have a normal ureter which is extending right up to the bladder to have a good tapering and reimplantation a long length subunital causal tunnel i think i answered the other question is how do you do this bladder distension program and anesthesia what amount, what amount no, of nothing. time do you instill no you are you see it's under local anesthesia pass an infant feeding tube ask her to hold urine when the 1 liter saline bottle is slowly going up majority of the times it is easy it is easy if the bladder is normal i would say if the bladder is normal what we need to assure is the normalcy of the bladder so it's not under anesthesia it's under no 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 it's a local local anesthesia under local on op basis sisters 10 ready 526 Is a there? There's a uh, clarification about the question which we asked was it was not regarding reflux or anti-reflux. He wants to know that if the flap comes anterior to the ureter uterus in future pregnancies, there's very high chance of injury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always there. That's always there. You see, any reconstruction will come will come onto the uh, onto the. Uh, uterus only, so that's always there. That's always true. That, that's that's always the reason true. he was asking: Can you do a tunnel through the broad ligament or something like that, so that it does not cause problem? No, I've done reimplantations in children, uh, uh, taking the taking the ureter into that uh, area, but not in this sort of a situations like what I am doing today. This is under uh, this I, lady uh, is I already postmenopausal. The... Yeah, no. Even if uh, this um, uterus will be in a, somewhere in the retropaternal uh, state only, it will be repaternized, and uh, there have been reports of uh, cesarean without any injury to this uh, uh, in the body flap. No, we presume that it is crossing over a period of time. Nature is so great; it gets adjusted to one side because it's it's something it it adjusts itself. we don't realize that these all things happen but they do happen uh uh oh come on hey what am i doing Okay, put it up. Just to get me the stand ready. Stand ready. Sorry. Action. Stand ready. Okay. so we are passing a stent through a suction cannula open ended uh, closed end stent the bent of the closed end will be used for our manipulation yes okay get the i'm a tip a little back no no yes once it goes a little it gets stabilized and it will start moving chalo i think it's gone take out take it out forceps forceps
Yes. The spontaneous movement of the uh, easy movement is one indication that you are in space. That's all. I think it's already in. It's 15 centimeters here. That's okay. It's in. Suction. One more three zero. Three zero. One more two, two more bytes, and then we'll take a three zero byte. Uh, three zero. No, that's okay. We'll leave it off. Don't leave it. That's all this fibrous. Wanna have a biopsy there? That area? Give me a scissor. Sir? Mm. <coughs> no, it got extravasated, sir, completely. She came with a extravasation, sepsis, and all. So we did a PCN in center. And that resulted in a bad stricture. That's it. Take out the serata for biopsy. Yeah, just taking it for biopsy, I don't know how what we'll get it out of it, but sure. Email three zero. Anything? Dr. Krishnamurti wants to know how much is the head low bowels are not coming in between. Bipolar. Huh? I don't know. How much is the head low? Because bowels head are not coming. Say. Similar to as a radical prostatectomy. You see, what we do is most of the time, we just go on doing the head low in such a fashion. Once your pelvis is free of bowel, that's enough. That's the, that's the thing. We cannot have any, you don't need more, neither you need less. That's all. Leave it there. Get a get a three zero P lock ready. Right. So this is the last byte onto the ureter. There's a question. Do you need a psoas itch to stabilize the bladder? Yeah, I don't think we need a psoas itch. What you see, all those things when, it, when the bladder is stretched across, it's a resting position of the bladder. What I need is a fixation to the peritoneum. That's enough. If the bladder is thin or the bladder has to be pulled up, then I need a psoas itch. I'll fix this peritoneum side of the uh, bladder to the peritoneum of the wall. That's enough. I need to close that gap. What happened? This also is become our tension. That's all. That to release the tension, I need that. But usually, I don't need otherwise. Do you do any bowel preparation for these patients before surgery? No, none, 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 none. The moment we do bowel preparation, their ileus becomes more. Their ileus no, will suppose, be prolonged. Suppose you have to suppose you have to convert this to an ileal ureter. No, even then, ileum you cannot prepare also. Even if you prepare, it will not be clean also. You have to clean it again. Cut it. Right. One more and then give me the wheel of comma.
you're planning a single layer or a double layer here now no, I'll, I'll, at this point till this area i'll do a multiple interrupted from now yeah. onwards i'll plan a uh, continuous with a v lock because this oh. is this is a critical area i don't want to have a uh, interrupted sutures but from now on i'll take a continuous continuous of uh, v lock Once you have uh, closed the bladder, would like to know if you need a longer body. Uh, mm -hmm. What will be uh, the placement of the uh, uh, incisions on the over the anterior surface of the bladder? No, I, I'll tell you one thing. What happens is, I don't believe in this four centimeter business. I don't believe. I I, okay. I always I always uh, uh, take two is to one ratio only. For not even four is to one. I take two two. Uh, um, Uh, two lengths of uh, length and uh, one length of breadth. That is what I require. If four centimeter base alone is not going to be adequate, what I do is I take a uh, I take a ureteric catheter, measure the distance between the distended bladder and the uh, uh, and the uh, and the junction and the ureter, and based on it, I'll plan my flap. I can show. Give me sister. Give me a small uh, ureteric catheter piece. I'll show you after this closure is over. Yeah. because uh, the open surgical technique of a 4 cm alone i don't think is not uh, is adequate oh sorry it sometimes uh, causes problems my only tend to thinking i always say is take it from the midline whenever you do laparoscopy because it is becomes easy the suture line should be facing you not onto the side your suture line should be just across you in front of you for that you need to have a one arm at the midline and the other arm is on the other side it goes on to the other side depending upon the length of it or the breadth of it so it comes in a line it's a, it's a ureter and your suture line all should be in a line clear line that's how it has to be There is no tension. Just I need some three zero sutures to no three zero for uh, for peritoneum. Full thickness of the bladder all the time. Doctor Malik. Yeah. Any any experience in body flap for undilated ureter, say uh, a gynecological procedure, uh, injury to the ureter, and the loss of uh, uh, ureter in in gynecological procedure, and uh, other than body, there's no option which can be entertained. No, I think bodies we do very routinely, even for gynecological procedures. See, when the when the ureteric injury is because of the infundibular or pelvic ligament level, the oophorectomy level. always it is going to be a bore flap bore flap yeah. majority of the laparoscopic injuries which happen uh which we may happen at the level it will higher than what tah injuries happen we end up in having a bore flap majority of the cases because the length is going to be very significantly gone it is not going to be managed and it is going to be thermal injury so the rest of the ureter also is damaged in the, instead of a open surgical injuries it is much safer but in a, uh, on this sort of injuries it's not in that case you do end to end or you uh, tunnel the lower end to end i don't think i don't think end to end will be a possibility in any of these cases very very rare i don't think end to end i do uh, end to end will be possible in many cases mm -hmm. it's an injury so i don't think it is so easy to say that end to end will be easy no i am i am talking of boris and and the ureter end other than uh, tunneling the ureter into the bore flap yeah yeah yes exactly no no you see this is an entrant between the bore flap and the ureter ureter yeah that's all no, i am not talking reimplantation i don't think any case which requires a bore flap most of the time we don't even look for reimplanting those cases
Sister, I need a clip probably. I need a clip probably. Of the two different sutras of the. Give me a clip. Hmm. Five under ten. Under ten. Ah, that's okay. This this will stay. Like ten, there do ten, dal do. Five is unstable. But all the scissors, there do. Give me one more five. Hmm. One more five. Lagya, 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 lagya. One more five. Give me three zero or what two zero, whatever it is. Siza, take it out. Kesha, yeah, yeah, Mali. I think we finished exactly on time. Perfect. We are about to finish now. I'll just suture this, uh, so this uh, peritoneum to this. That's all. For such, I should thank Gauss. Gauss has been assisting me in all the three cases. Well, that is the beauty of it. And my team, who bear with me in most of the times. Mali. on behalf of the usi let me thank your team on a sunday yes. on a sunday your anesthesia nursing staff and all your yes uh, nitya is here have been there mm. and uh, Swami. Kudos, kudos to your team for pulling it off in 4 hours three major surgeries amazing uh, skill and uh, thank you thank you sir i'm still <laughs> i still cannot understand how you can get so much of energy and stamina to do 4 uh, hours continuously like this <laughs> <laughs> we see my i am very inspired since yesterday with mahendra bandari sir being there seeing him doing what all can we be done at that page and what are we now <laughs> we are we are minuscules in front of us <laughs> i know sir is sitting and closely watching it here <laughs> and uh, thank you sir for being there it was wonderful mike, having you mike. there mike uh, dr malik can you sh- show us the flap the pad yeah, i'll do flap that i'll do that I'll, yeah. i i'll just close this uh, extra thing a little so that there is no there is no uh, gap between so there is a otherwise herniation can happen that's the reason why i'm closing it up get me a small piece of uh, Cut. Get me a small piece of uh, urinary catheter, please. last one Yeah, cut it. 
I think that is the closure of this, uh, this thing which is there by the side. Give me a ureteric catheter, I'll show how I plan a flap. Okay. This is the ureteric catheter which I keep it. So you measure the length of the thing, what is necessary. Suppose the ureter is here, this is the ureter. I have got one, two, three, four, five, six. If the bladder chain stops there, I need six centimeters. So I take eight centimeters flap. So what I do is from here, I'll take eight centimeters. From here, you take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So up to this point, I'll take a flap. And how much is the width? Eight centimeters means minimum four centimeters. So I'll take a breadth of run the midline, a four centimeter flap from this way, one, two, three, four. And I make a I make an angle like this. Uh, the, one of the techniques what you need to understand is when you are making this uh, flap like this, mark it first, number one. Open here first. See, when, when there are two things. Either you open on both the sides and divide it at the end. Or, because what happens is after, if you are, uh, if you are very not sure how much is the length necessary, only raise the flap on both the sides. Don't divide it. Measure it again. Recheck, recheck, and then do it. If you are very sure, like this case, I can as well divide the tip of it also and get it across. But you require a bigger length. What you do is maintain a, a two parallel incisions. Don't divide this point. Recheck it how much is necessity and then divide. Or otherwise, you can go a little beyond this area into the other side of the bladder. The rotational flap. That is what is necessary. I don't know. I think I answered your question. Yes, yes, yes. And I would like to see the peritoneal flap which you reflected from the bladder anteriorly. How it will come back. How? The, this uh, yeah. Just leave it. Yes, yes, that this we want good. to see now. Yeah, this is what. Yeah, that's right. That's right. This will this will just cover it up. That that goes off. That automatically yeah. goes off. Yeah. And this will get stuck here again. What we think that mm -hmm. it is stay posterior. No, this will get mm -hmm. stuck here again. Mm -hmm. And I close the uh, gaps in between so that the herniation cannot happen. That's all. Canada. And it says there's no traction at all, so I don't think I need to do anything. Drain. Drain on that side. And for the flap, you will put some back clip or it will automatically fall there? No, no. That peritoneal no. flap. Peritone, nothing. I do anything. I just keep two sutures on that side. I don't need to keep it. Keep it anterior. Keep it anterior. And that's it. I just keep a drain like this and leave it. Oh. That's all. So thank you very much. For a Keshav, I should thank, thank USA you for this opportunity. I thank should thank Mali. my team. Wonderful, Mithya, wonderful. Everybody. Thank and, you very much. Uh, Gauss also. Gauss has been uh, great assisting. Tremendous. Tremendous uh, stamina, both of you. And thank you, sir, Mahendra Bandari, sir, for being there. It was uh, wonderful much. to have you there. This opportunity, this is a very deceptive surgery. He makes it so simple. No, no. <laughs> and that, uh, <laughs> that's the problem of a good surgeon because yes. people start thinking that, oh my God, it is so simple. <laughs> no, but it was a treat to watch. And thank you very much. Wish you all the best and uh, look forward to see you in action post COVID. <laughs> Keshav? Yeah. Thank you, Malik. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful demonstration. We are getting all on the chat box, all comments that it was excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, the prostate, I, think, uh, I opened, I opened uh, into what, the prostate. That's a mistake. <laughs> Dr. Malik, two things which we learned. Uh, uh, you are saying that uh, exploring and exploiting the anatomy. And I think yes. that, that was the uh, demonstration. And, and your message, uh, uh, work your plan and plan your work for the case. The two messages which you got. Excellent you, demonstration. Thank, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Hmm. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Arun. Um, thank you, sir. And all the others, all of them who had joined, thank you. And the team at Aino, I must congratulate all the staff, the anesthesia, the nursing staff, Wonderful. and the housekeeping Wonderful. staff, everybody for being working on a Sunday morning to get this transmission to across the country. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.